Like, oh my God. How's so. he going to handle it? Um, all right. Well, let's do this. Uh, we got it all queued up, ready to rock. And let's see. Let me count this down. There we go. Right tab, right place. Three, two, one. Re establishing power to core and supplementary systems. Everybody, welcome back to Core, where everybody wants us to talk about that weird-looking ten cent WoW ripoff game that came out today. I don't know if we'll be bringing that up or not, but I've been getting that all day long. You Sounds guys, like we just did. You guys gonna, <laughs> yeah, you guys it. gonna we talk on about Core it. about that game? And I'm like, it looks about as shallow as a kiddie pool. Once again, I don't. These Asian MMOs don't do anything for me. Nothing wrong with the Can Asians. Can I tell you? I think it actually looks okay. It looks it beautiful. Looks like a WoW ripoff. Yeah, yeah. like it, it can be both things. Yeah. The thing can be a ripoff of something and kind of look cool at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I don't. I mean, we're so far into the WoW reign that who cares? Everything's a WoW ripoff at this point. But it just. I need more than just, ooh, flashy new engine. I, I, it looked like it might not have much to it, is all. But Scott, the dragon lands on top of the ramparts and then looks down at the camera and breathes fire. Yeah, the the, the elves have really long eyebrows. What else? Uh, they got airships <laughs> that look just like the Horde and Alliance airships and um, other stuff. They're not real original over there at Tencent, I'm afraid. And they even own a little bit of Blizzard, but anyway, what are they going to do? Let's uh, let's get to uh, what's going on real quick. I got a little pre-show thing. I want to start off uh, by saying this. Uh, here's a text from a listener. I've played either, or sorry, I've never played either of the Last of Us games, either one or two. I've been an Xbox PC guy for a while. I know nothing about that world or those characters. If you were me, would you go ahead and watch the show coming out, or wait until you've played it? I've been getting the game on Steam. I'll be getting the game on Steam when it comes out in March, by the way. Um, we just had a huge discussion about this in our pre-show, so I wanted to use this as a, as, a, as a chance to remind people that if you're a patron of the show, we do pre-show before the show, sometimes lengthy pre-show, where we talk about all kinds of stuff. In today's case, we talked about spoilers as a general thing, but also about The Last of Us, even though we really didn't have any spoilers about it. So it's a little two-parter kind of conversation. So we go deep into it there. I would highly recommend doing that. Some months ago, we put out a free one of those that talked about Oh, what did we talk about that everybody was so into? Was it free to play stuff or what was our deal? Uh, we talked about AI art. Oh, that's right. That AI art generation. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it was really good stuff. So you've already had a taste. And if you want more of it, you can certainly get it there. Um, but we can still answer this question and say, I think you can just watch the show. Honestly. I think you could, too. It's going to depend on your, you know, how you feel about spoilers. Again, yeah. if if you think you can't watch a show and then play a game that's going to cover a similar story, a very similar story, then I'd pick one. Yeah. But um, I have played the game multiple times. I really like the game. I really like that story. And I'm watching the show and I'm having a really good time with the show. So I, I think that it is fine to do both. It's not like once you know, you can never go back. Right. One fun thing that I'm kind of doing is I'm going... I watched the first episode and then I went back and watched some playthrough of the first game and got to about the part they're at. I'm going to pause that, bookmark it, watch the next episode, go back, remind myself what the game did differently. That's kind of a fun thing to do, especially because the stories are so similar. Uh, so anyway, I don't think you're, I don't think you're harming anything to, to watch this show without having played the game. But if you play the game first, there's nothing wrong with that either. This is a very narrative based game. And, of course, television is a very narrative-based medium, so you're pretty safe. Uh, unless they really F it up. Like, by the third episode, if they're, uh, we've decided to, you know, we're all going to France or something, then then I would worry. But but right now they seem <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, it could go off the rails. We are only one episode in. Next yeah. one, Mickey Mouse could show up. That's right. But if you want to um, hear our full our full thoughts on how this thing went, that pre-show available now to Patreons at Patreon, Patreons, Patreons, Patreons at Patreon.com slash core show so go check it out oh our big hot topic of the week i just was at a hot topic the other day sorry that reminded me of that have you been in one of those lately have you gone no, in there because i got older why it, were you in one um we were looking <laughs> for sure i know what that is it's a store here in the states it's in mostly in malls but it was famous in the 90s mostly the 90s a little bit late 80s for having kind of emo clothes um 
it's where all the cool kids would get their weird chains and their Jinko jeans and all that where stuff. Where you get band shirts and yeah. anime shirts and all that. Things with chains on it. Yeah. Here's the bad news. We didn't news. have any big brands. We had Rock Junction, downtown Ottawa. Well, that sounds all right. Rock Junction. I like that. What would you get there? Like around. Kiss t-shirts, things like that? Yeah, all that, all that kind of rock. Pair. I kind of get the store you're in. In fact, I was in something called a Spencer's going Christmas shopping. Oh, yeah. Spencer's. And they had yeah, some... Spencer's. They, yeah, yeah, they yeah. had... Oh, you guys have Spencer's? We That's do. A, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, because there were like anime dildos and stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. that you go to the back sure. and it's yeah. like... I was like, wait, I thought this was a rock band t-shirt store. Now I'm in a sex shop. Oh, yeah. No, Spencer's. It's we used a little to, of both. It's yeah. a little of both. When we were teenagers, Spencer's had the beaded area. It was like a beaded curtain. And back there, mm-hmm. they had like weird, sexy stuff. But then the rest of the store is like fake vomit and dog poo. and you know, Yeah, okay. All, all right. That. I have a sense uh, of what you're talking it about. It was fun. But Hot Topic was more about, it was more about fashion. And it was just like rebel teen kind of clothes. Uh, I just want to let the world know now. That it's mostly SpongeBob t-shirts and backpacks. That's what it is now. So oh, no. It's all branded crap, and it's all like cartoons. And it's fine. I'm not saying anybody sh- you shouldn't go there. Obviously, they know their audience, but that's what but it is. Do they still now. have a dildo section with the SpongeBob N- stuff? Not in this it... place, no. Okay. no. They never had dildos. No, hot, had... hot Topic isn't that. Like The difference between Hot Topic and Spencer's is basically macaroni dicks. Like <laughs> Hot Topic is edgy, but it's just kind of like it's tasteful edgy. Like yeah. Spencer's macaroni is kind of tasteless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, macaroni noodles in the shape of dicks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because then when people are eating macaroni and cheese, they look down, they're like, that's a penis. Yeah, like that guy in the GIF. The, okay. the <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that guy. Yeah, I love that guy. Yeah. Um, the Seinfeld or something. Anyway. So Hot Topic is very like, PG family kid store kind of sort deal. of, but it's more than it used to be. Like it used to be edgy and cool. Now it just seems like it's. And there's a lot of Rick and Morty, which I guess is edgy and cool. Well, that's, probably probably not much longer. Maybe not much longer. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> we'll just edgy, in fact. <laughs> yeah, maybe, even, what, maybe not that cool. I don't know. Start a, a big a gang, you might start sporting those kinds of clothes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got the know. Justin anyway. Roiland stuff going on right now, and who knows how that'll pan out, but. It's kind of made me not want to go back and finish, uh, uh, what's it called? My gun talks to me.com. What's the name of the game? I, I own life. I own life. Yeah. And- I uninstalled it. It's, you know, again, we're going to get into it cause it's in the news, I guess, but like, you know, play what you want to play, enjoy yeah. what you want to do. Like he isn't the only person who made that video game. It is okay to support other people. Even if you don't agree with the creator, which we get a whole other thing about the voice but is like everything. If, yeah. <laughs> if you are playing a game and it constantly reminds you of real world shitty stuff and it makes you feel bad, then yeah, yeah, don't maybe play don't that play that it. Game. We're not making easy. this judgment for you. You make your own judgments. You do what you yeah. want to do. It just kind of, it just kind of sour. Not me. saying my decision should be your decision, but I went, do I really want to have him? Him talk to me for a while right now no i don't think i want to hear from him right now i'll uninstall that game yeah, I'm, getting, I, I'm getting to the point with this stuff where i don't want to like anyone anymore yeah no don't you know what i mean don't even like, like oh, your i heroes. love that guy's creator oh pedophile oh yeah. you know oh that guy you're doing awesome stuff oh great another one here's what you, you know? do they always say don't meet your heroes i say don't like your heroes and then you're good you don't have to worry about it you know yeah. why are the heroes Screw in the first you, place? peter parker yeah <laughs> <laughs> you suck <laughs> saving people uh but anyway so he's cool, he's uh stuff. he'll do whatever he's gonna do but Maybe um J. jonah jameson was right all along my whole thing with him was like okay whatever they're doing is, is actually going to trial so let's see what the evidence is but then a whole bunch of his uh dms to people were leaked or not leaked yeah. some just a voluntary showed him and that stuff was freaking off the charts weird it's yeah. a smoke fire situation where you're like, yeah, due process, but I don't care. But also, people showed up with receipts real heavy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually the receipts come later. These receipts were like they were all. Everyone had them in their wallets. They all pulled out their fat George Costanza wallets and poof, there were like twelve receipts about Justin Roiland's horrible, horrible behavior. Uh, but anyway, that's not what I was going to tell you about. What I was going to tell you about instead is the possible horrible behavior that's going on between NetEase and Blizzard. Okay. I remember a glowing uh, Mike Morheim getting up at a BlizzCon and saying, we're so excited to work with Ned. And that may have been uh, J. Allen Brack, now that I think he about said, it. He said, hello, China. Hello, China. Actually, it was part of the hello, hello, China stuff, I think. Wasn't it? Yeah, I think that 
Netties has been that Netties Diablo relationship. I want to say has been around for a while. Yeah, they because they, they do the Wow stuff with them. Like yeah. they're the Wow, yeah. the the arm that does Wow in China. There is no World of Warcraft without Netties and that partnership, which is part of the today's bad news. But um, I'm trying to find. I don't know about BlizzCon China. announcements though. That's that I'm drawing a blank on. Something there, happened but. there, and I don't remember. But where is it? Hello, China. There it is. Okay. Anyway, uh, the deal is this. They're they've run on they've the ship has run aground. Their relationship has gotten rocky. And they've got a they've had a disagreement. This was already a known thing, but it got taken to the new level by NetEase anyway. They tore down a giant orc well, axe statue on a live stream for 30 minutes to uh express how pissed they were. And then drank green tea. Yeah, and then like, drank green tea. But <laughs> well, I only saw a I don't screenshot. know if I don't know if I would say that this is exactly just on net ease. Like, sure, they might have escalated to destroying statues, and that is an escalation for sure. But, um, you know, they said that Blizzard's offer, because basically what happened, we talked about this a little bit. I did a little one shot on news where I talked about it, and I said I was actually still hopeful that they might figure things out. It's kind of going the other way, but clearly they were still trying to talk. Basically, uh, Blizzard offered an attempt to reach an agreement for a six-month extension so that players wouldn't have disruption and they could keep services going for another six months while they, in theory, figured out something more long-term going forward. Um, Netties found the offer offensive. Yeah. Like, so bad that it was patently offensive to consumers, to them, and they full-on rejected it and then destroyed an Orcax statue and drank green tea. Now, there is a reason for the green tea. Um, it's in the article. I don't remember it. Let me, let me there, see what yeah, the there's some with the green tea. There's some meaning um, with it or something, right? It means some... It's, it's like a symbolic... Uh, it's a Chinese slur for seemingly innocent but an ultimately manipulative person literally branded as a green tea. And uh, so that's why they, they destroyed a statue and then all sat around drinking green tea to show this is what we think of you, Blizzard. Yep. And Wait, look how okay. massive. So I, didn't, I didn't seen this video. Like, are those devs? No. Who's, who's... Yeah, those are people at NetEase. Those are not construction workers. They're not wearing safety equipment. They got sledgehead. Like, this is these aren't <laughs> no. workers, right? No, these are just these workers. Are I assume they wear safety equipment in China normally. Uh, I don't. Maybe that's an assumption. These are NetEase workers mad at Blizzard. Yeah, they are, and they are mad. They are not and it's happy. Just mad because it's they just didn't give enough money. Like, do we have? Do we know? I assume that's all it is, right? Like not enough money. Well, they so the the deal that they couldn't come to, Blizzard has been not outspoken, but they basically said in hushed tones publicly that, well, we weren't able to, you know, secure a, a deal with Netties, and they see that as offensive because they, I think they were willing to find a solution, but I they think that Blizzard's the problem, that Blizzard is the reason. I don't think we have much more detail beyond that, though. No one else is given us yeah much i mean it, it to your oh, point okay. though yeah like it all kind of comes down to money uh, at some point but i think where a lot of the passion comes from is they they view the disruption to the customers as paramount and the blizzard's willing to let that happen as really offensive mm -hmm. um and there was the uh there was one guy who posted on his linkedin um and he basically said one day that the story will come out and people will understand how one terrible person can ruin everything Whoa. in reference to a representative at Blizzard. So I want to know, know who he was talking about. We don't know what the details were, but he posted it to LinkedIn and it was uh, it was. Do you think it's pretty... Ak Akbar or Advar? Or what's his name? Who's the new guy? <laughs> Admiral <Yabara>. Akbar. Is... <laughs> what is it? Bar B Bat Balot? Mike Are you Yabara? talking about Mike Yabara? Yabara, that's it. <laughs> Admiral Akbar. Mike Akbar. We yeah. must find a new way to make this a deal come through with Netties. Yeah. Okay, we'll pay you this much. We it's see time. here the Death Star. This represents the money we wish to make. <laughs> oh, I wish that was the way it was. Um, there was another guy on Twitter uh, who said, don't use Blizzard saving use function for now. Several players' game saves have been lost or damaged. This is World of Warcraft saves. And servers in China have been shut down for maintenance. Uh, so they all got messages saying that their saves were corrupt, their characters didn't exist, and or they just couldn't get in. I think this means there's no WoW in China at all. 
I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I need to know what was the insult. Yeah, I need to know too. And who was like, the guy? Was it a personal attack? Like he I said, thought maybe one it was day just... the story will come out. <laughs> I want to know yeah, yeah. that day needs. To I mean, come. I assume it's business people and not any other name we'd know, right? It's got to be someone in an executive position. It's not like they're going to go, "Oh, Ian Hazakost has peed on something, and now we're mad." It's not going to be like that. It's going to be something big, somebody big. I don't think Ian was in on the <laughs> Netties deal. No, probably not. But there are millions and millions of wow players in china and they're not only out but that means that revenue's done everything's canceled it's off it's done I mean, um, you kind of look at this too as a face saving thing where they net because netties is still a company in china so it's saving face for its chinese customers by you know blaming the nasty americans for the deal falling through not us you know what i mean but well like, the, just, the, you gotta remember sides to every story and it's like corporation on corporation i'm sure they're both kind of dumb well the, yeah the, and this... i i think it also is a testament to you know it, it is two stories but i feel like there's a third story and as fun as because there is fun to be had in green tea drinking and statue tearing down and people writing nasty things on linkedin there's some fun there mm -hmm. but like if you're a world of warcraft player in china it sucks to be you right oh, now yeah, because bad. two companies are fighting like what a shitty deal you know they didn't uh, guess what i didn't pick to live in arizona this is where i was born and i would be real sad if because this is where i was born i couldn't play the video games i wanted to play it sucks yeah i don't and, like it either uh, and i kind of don't care who's right and who's wrong in the two companies going head to head i kind of just want the players to get what they deserve which is to just play the games they want to play yeah, but now I, they can play dyson sphere program in the original <laughs> language and that's even better than world of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah that is even better i'm uh, just joking i mean it, you're right it does suck if players are caught in the crossfire and it's a game people like and form communities over so yeah and i don't know how it affects other blizzard titles like i assume this is a this certainly i mean it, immortal's still going and it's still net I ease do. as the partner immortal will continue to go because net ease contract with uh diablo immortal is a separate contract right so um, that's still it going is not oh, so a they, part of this <laughs> so they tear down the axe drink green tea and they still got to go to work they talking still to have to do like, it what's, the, yep. what's next week's meeting like yep that's like, what I'm worried uh, hey about. Hey guys, that seems so a little weird. Here, here's the thing I would say. Uh, forgot now. Was I going to say? I was going to say something. I was going to say. The, oh, a part of this you could blame. There's an argument to be made that the problem with this is the original setup, which is the Chinese government requires any outside of China companies to have a quote unquote sister partner company in China that they will share all data with, work with, and stuff. You can't go in there just as Blizzard or Google or Microsoft or whoever and just say, we're Microsoft in China now, and we're doing our thing. You have to have partners by law of the land, China law. NetEase is that partner in this case. So Blizzard didn't even have a choice but to work with them or work with someone to have their product in China. That part is already weird. Because it's required. It's a thing. And you also have to share data with them. So all your data is not really your data, which means the government can also get that data because by law, those com companies can't keep data from the government. Um, so it's already broken and kind of j janky in that regard. So the fact that they couldn't come to a, a reasonable solution is kind of lame because they didn't really need to work with them in the first place. They had the resources to do this on their own, but they're just adhering to this weird law. And that's just part of the conversation I wanted to make sure I inserted in there because yeah. it's weird. Yeah. It's freaking weird. So anyway, the cutting ties. That's it. You're out, baby. No more you here. Oh, now, that maybe now yeah. we can have some more skeletons and stuff in our game. Yeah, maybe that's the trick. I was looking at undead screenshot and uh, you gotta look at the you gotta look at the bright side. Finally, we can show <laughs> bladders and bones and stuff. So, yeah, hey, yep. bladders, the thing everybody's been hungry for. Although well, you know what I mean, like this, the abominations yeah, I and stuff. They can get more off the chain. You know, Blizzard can do it. So. Oh sure, I'm looking at the. Um, this is fun, kind of funny on that regard. I'm looking at the screenshot from China where they couldn't log into his undead character. And this undead character's got the bones and skeletal stuff. I thought they covered all that shit up. Maybe something changed. I don't know. Maybe by... Because they also gave Americans the option to not have the bones showing. Maybe they just made it uniform and it's an option either way. Oh, maybe. Okay. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. I don't live in China. I can still play World of Warcraft. Yeah, you're in Arizona where Warcraft is free like the air you breathe. 
<laughs> yep, and the, the water begins except for that one place. Yeah. Yep. It all comes <laughs> raining down in plentiful amounts every year in the middle yeah. of Arizona. Uh, well, yep. anyway, we'll keep our eye on it, but who knows? And also, I guess I'm a little sad. I understand disagreements and I understand acting out. And I understand all that. That's that big giant statue of what is basically, uh, what's the name of um, uh, Duratan's uh, axe? Gore uh, Howl. Gore, gore Howl, right? Gore Howl. Okay. Yes. Gore Howl. Uh, that was badass Admiral looking. Akbar, if you prefer. Seeing that wrecked makes me just a, a lot sad. I don't know. You know, you could have kept that up. I don't know. There's a lot of them. You can like <laughs> oh yeah, there's a ton of there's yeah. a ton of train sized axes around. It's fine. <laughs> Let's get yeah. another one. Break it it drops off garage. It drops somewhere else. It was in vanilla. You yeah. get a gore how. That's true. Hell, I got a trinket. I mean, they just game. look like a bunch. Either way, they just look like a bunch of crybabies. Like, eh, whatever. I know like, nobody looks good in this. We're gonna take down your big axe and drink tea and make a video out of it. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, just take it down, shut up. Like, they did a thirty. Fine. This is over. They did a thirty-minute <laughs> live stream of that teardown. We only have a clip thing of it, but yeah, um, uh, thirty I mean, minutes. Jeez. Actually, I'm kind of impressed uh, they I, tore that. When I first read it, I read, "Oh, they tore down an orc sculpture." Do they have that orc bronze thing at every place Blizzard does business? That's what I thought. I mean, tell me what it's, it's about. That. Then I may change my tune. If they're like, we're going to pay you in peanuts. Yeah. Then I, I'd be like, yeah, tear that baby down. That's an insulting thing. Go for it. But, yeah. you know. It got I hairy. Know. So, uh, just trust us. This, pro <laughs> this protest makes sense. Yeah. Believe us without <laughs> us telling you anything. You I, know? I think we had that already in the States. It was the QAnon protest, which was basically, trust us, this makes sense. And it didn't. It didn't like, make any sense. Neither I still this. don't know what it's about. I mean, really, do I have to watch 10 documentaries to know? Like, this is dumb. There are no good so, documentaries that'll yeah. tell you. Trust me. It's all bad. Yeah. Uh, well done, China. Yeah, well done. Good job. Good luck. And may Immortal not suffer the same fate. Or maybe do. I don't know. Maybe we don't care what happens to the mortal and mortal's going fine and that's the one where it's like eh, you know maybe maybe it's a public service if those people can't play their game maybe but they're making money and i really like who's in charge of that game so i'm always twisted on that game because i fell off pretty quick but i really like wyatt chang and i wish him the best I, well I, yeah just on that note it's becoming increasingly clear over the months and the weeks that we covered news that the, the people who develop and design games are far removed from the people running the operations on the business side. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Faux so show. It's All right. hard that they get caught in the crossfire. But. That sound you heard is the sound we play when we're about to read a patron message from one of our Patreons. We got one here from Jonathan Doyle, who says this. Have you ever had a game or series that you were sure you would hate until you tried it and ended up loving it? I have one. Okay. It's That's more serious. of a genre thing. I thought I was going to hate Vampire Survivors and that kind of game. Just looking at it, I was like, I'm not going to like that. One stick, moving around. Rrr, this sounds bad. It's not bad. It's really good. It turned out to be one of my biggest surprises and most fun things last year. So that's an easy one for me. Um, but I still haven't found a tower defense game that I actually thought, you know, I, hate, I th always think I'll hate those. And when I do play them, I do hate them. They're bad. They're bad <laughs> games. And you can't, everyone who says, hey, isn't that just a tower defense game? No, it is not. Yeah. Name another tower defense game where I can, where I have one tower and I can move it all around and do stuff. That's not a tower defense game. That's one guy moving around shooting shit. That's different. Not the same. Uh, John, do you have a genre or game where you're like, I'm going to hate this and then you like it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like I, I tend to be pretty open to, uh, trying not open to trying new things open to going oh i liked this despite all the fighting and clawing i did to not get to it Cause it's actually very hard to get me to try new things but once i do uh, i have been pleasantly surprised so like hearthstone was one of those for me i did mm -hmm. not think i was gonna like uh, a card game um so when blizzard was like we're making a card game i was like well intrigued but i don't like card games and deck builders and stuff like that um, so that was one. I did not think I was going to like battle royales, mm. and I like those. Mm. Um, I did not think I was ever going to like a MOBA. So Heroes of the Storm was not a game I would have anticipated liking. Um, yeah, I think I think like a lot of competitive type games. I tend to not be a very competitive person. 
um, with good reason. Like I'm just an awful person to play games competitively with. Um, I just turn into the worst version of myself and I don't like it. So mm. I tend to avoid them and assume like, eh, it's, it's not going to be for me, but it turns out every now and then there's a few that are really, really good. I play Fortnite a lot. Um, and I wouldn't have thought that I would like that even once no build mode got introduced. We, it's like, yeah, but I'm not going to be hooked on it. We've, mm. we've had some incomparable moments playing mo uh, heroes together oh, yeah, over hell the yeah. years. Yeah, I agree. And there have been some moments yeah. where... Those god godlike stitches hooks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there were some times when we were losing them, and John's, the side John's talking about about himself. The Leo the Leo plays, the, the, there's that one match where it was down to like 4%, we were getting BM'd, and then I think it was John that Leoric everyone and wiped the team, yeah. and then we, we went back to, you know... Those struggles and victories, I still remember them. They're yeah, great. But do you, you do know? you remember yeah. John? John would yeah, have some true. bad nights though. He would get kind of mad at everybody. Do you remember that? Yeah, that would well, happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I knew where it was coming from. It's just that's the way those games get under some people's skin. I totally get it. Do you yeah, feel that yeah. way at all when you play Fortnite, or is that not really get into it? It's not as I, I do when I play with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> oh boy. I have occasionally been told you're not very fun to play with tonight, and then I walk it back. I realize my my competitive side is coming out. Um, the reason I like battle royales um, in general is because I'm pretty good at putting. You know, when you play Heroes of the Storm, you got. Don't math me on this, guys. You got a 50-50 chance of winning. You're either going to be on the winning side or the losing side. Mm. Like, it's like, all right, pretty good odds. Um, but you go into a battle royale and it's like, all right, one person's going to win out of these hundred people that dropped. I'm most likely not going to win. And it's kind of easier for me to put myself in that perspective of, I don't need to worry about this because I'm probably not going to win anyway. So go in and try to have fun and, you know, keep it casual. Problem is, is now we are good enough at Fortnite to where we win, you know, occasionally. And so then that, that little competitive edge starts to come out where it's like, oh, if you had just done this, mm. it would have been different. It mm. would have been different. Mm. Um, but I, I, I recognized it. Person. She recognizes it. And uh, we have gotten better at talking around it and uh, be better people overall and instead have more fun with it. And she gives me just as much shit back. So, so I just thought of something I never thought about with a battle royale. Fair. If you got a 100-person battle royale, you enter that game with the most pure raw stats of having a 1% chance of winning. Yeah. Because you are just one of 100 people. Now, obviously, if your skill set is good, you're going to have you're going to augment that number and it's going to be something higher. But if you all came in sight unseen... Everybody there's only got a one percent chance. So somebody who wins is like winning the lottery almost. Like it's like it's pretty good. Well, they're not the worst odds, but those are still pretty bad odds. That you're it's also I, I just like the numbers you're dealing with in a one v one hundred situation because you kill ten people and you're like I've killed ten percent of the people playing this video game. Yeah, yeah. Look at me. Yeah, <laughs> stone cold killer right now. Yeah. No, there's that's a good way of looking at it. I should do that more. Maybe I'd enjoy them more. I kind of I was in love with BRs and then I fell out of love with them and I I don't know how to get back in love with the BR again. I don't know what it's it needs to It's not do. play to win. It's just to play to you know, do quests, play to have dumb fun, play to mess around, you know. I for me it's it's always just about like they added this new uh it's almost like it's out of Assassin's Creed, this new item in, in Fortnite where you get a little hawk that flies around and you mm -hmm. can go scout and ping things and mark them. Really great when you're playing duos. When you're by yourself, you are exposed wherever you shot the hawk from. Um, and I did it last night and got immediately killed, leaving my body behind. Someone killed me. Um, but I had positioned myself to where all my loot when I died went up into the terrain and the territory and the person couldn't loot any of my gear. Great. And yeah, I died, but I took such joy in that one little fact. I was like, you're not getting any of that. I stuff. call that a Look win. All actually. That good stuff you'll never get. Yeah. I that win. may not be the chicken dinner you're looking for, but it's a decent side dish. I like that. <laughs> it's good. So when yeah. you fire that bird off, do they see some kind of trail or something? Is that how you get found out? They can see where it came from, but also I made the mistake of just doing it when the circle wasn't very big. There wasn't a lot of places to look. Gotcha. And because I was trying to get away from where I was quick because I didn't want them to see where the bird came from, I think they were actually really close to me, and I flew away. So I was scouting away from myself instead of scouting close and being like, is there anybody going to shoot me? Um, 
So yeah, mm. but there's cool stuff like that in the game. I I think the important thing if you want to get into it is again, don't go in to be like, oh, I gotta gotta get those victory royales. Just go in to have fun. Yeah, and, surprise uh, yourself with eventually. one. Yeah, you might yeah. win eventually. So Bo, if you had to pick one of the battle royales that exist today, and someone said, Bo, you have to play one right now. You're playing it today. Which one do you pick? I liked Apex, honestly. Kind of me too. I'd probably pay Apex. Apex was Apex really good. Apex was team based, which I, I like. I like playing com- team based competitive stuff. Yeah. Solo's fine, but but friends is fun. Sure. And you, the mechanics in it were kind of sweet. I mean, I like kind of PUBG too, but it's, it's also janky. Like, it's like you, I don't know. You're gonna pick one. I, I kind of think Apex is the slickest looking one on the yeah. market. I wonder if PUBG's m- more technically proficient than it used to be. Because when we were playing, you couldn't even go through windows and stuff. I know that's all changed yeah. now, so it's probably better, a lot better. But yeah, if like mantling and jumping is better, maybe. Yeah. I I still appreciate the aesthetic of PUBG, but I don't know. Um, mm. We have some good memories trying that game too, but uh, I think Apex is my answer too. We, sh- we I wouldn't mind playing that once in a while. Get three of us in there again, you know? Yeah. Why not? It's free. It's everywhere. It's on Steam now. It's on freaking consoles. It's a good game. All right. Sorry. Well, thank you for that uh, patron message, Jonathan. We hope that answered your you're gonna, questions. You're going to ask me mine or no? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. I went so long. My bad. Didn't, didn't uh, yeah, I'm chance. not even I'm being no. dumb. Tell me yours, please. Oh, I was going to say uh, League of Legends. Mm. A lot of people told me to play that game for years. And then Blizzard's like, hey, we're making a MOBA. And I'm like, oh, shit. Let me go play League of Legends and see what this game's about. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I really like it. And I played a ton of League before Heroes came out. Mm. And you ever the get other ten... one I'd say is Elden Ring. Oh, Elden Ring. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I was pretty resistant to playing from software. And the listener, I remember Omega Mine, Omega Nine X, was like, "Here, I'm buying it for you. Play it." Hmm. And I'm glad I did because I ended up enjoying it a lot more than I actually thought I was going to. So very nice. Did you? Um, do you ever feel tempted to go play League now? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of want to. I get tempted to play Heroes. I'm like thinking of. Logging some games again. Yeah. I like MOBAs. I, I just, <laughs> I, 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 you know, it, there's a world in the branching in the branching universe where HGC doesn't get pulled, and we're still playing Heroes and still Heroes of the Storm show. You know, so yeah. Well, that's uh, that's an awesome. Or, that's a cool timeline that I wish would exist. You know, I mean, I really like what we're doing now. But uh, aside from that, I wanted Heroes to be huge. Yeah. Esports is shrinking overall. HGC is or not HGC. Uh, Kyle was letting us know before the show. Uh, Hearthstone's pulling an HGC now and yeah. pairing back. Looks looking like the year before the end kind of deal. So, yeah. yeah. And Blizzard's not offering any new esports on the horizon, as far as I can tell. Um, and I think a lot of companies are kind of moving. You don't hear as much about esports news and goings on and stuff well, like blizzard that, bought know? that that place in burbank that was like a dedicated esports arena does that they still have that are they sell yeah, that off no yeah. they still do no that? they're still doing like uh, overwatch league but it, that's only a matter of time like I, I think part i think if you're the company making the game and backing all the production yeah that's too much on one company that company decides to do something different and it's all over that community gets the rug pulled out from underneath it yeah. Like no one company runs chess and there's plenty of chess tournaments and organizations like catering to that community. It doesn't need to be a, a publicly traded company needs to have everything be huge and show growth. Right. Chess probably goes in decline and grows and, you know, it, it's not just impacted in the same way. So I think the future of esports has to rethink like how it's structured. And I think you're just going to see a lot more of esports be like a glorified, um, sweeps, sweepstakes program or something mm. like like yes we have a game yes it'll have an esports scene but it's it's like not really serious you know it's it's just there to help push sales it's not the next way. NFL level hugeness yeah because yeah. I mean even with HGC it's like the comment I made it's like great I'm going to work hundreds of hours a week just to maybe have a chance at earning minimum wage this year <laughs> on what you're doing is like what's the point mm. like so yeah, yeah. well it's too bad about Hearthstone. I was seeing that from Kyle as well, and I thought that seems a little weird. But they are bringing it back to Twitch, so I don't know what that means. I mean, their deal with YouTube and Facebook probably what petered out. 
or ended or uh, just well, ran its course? They had contract. Like uh, that's another thing I think Blizzard uh, that really boneheaded moves on their part was to like sign exclusivity deals with Facebook during the Heroes era, yeah. and ex- it's the he- Hearthstone had exclusivity with YouTube. Oh, that's the deal. Like, why would you do that? Just don't sign a deal. Just broadcast it everywhere. Like, yeah. Obviously, Blizzard gained something out of it in order to, I would assume, to hamper their um, availability on different broadcasting channels. So It's also possible we've just hit a ceiling on what esports is capable of, and maybe that ceiling gets broken eventually, but we, I just don't think it's... I don't think there's a bunch of growth that at least that anyone can see outside of where it currently is. There's there's more factors going into it than that for sure. But yeah. um yeah, I mean there's other just larger factors. Uh, I think the we were talking like a few weeks ago, the end result of game streamers is also to become a drama channel, not to be about games either. Like mm-hmm. we're sort of seeing this um I think funneling away from specific game streamers to just personality follows and stuff like that so that takes eyeballs away from you know i can watch the league finals or i can watch my favorite streamer react to the johnny depp trial (laughs) (laughs) it's getting more views the johnny depp trial yeah that's that's... i feel like i'm seeing that's what's happening it used to be uh let me log into twitch and check out the lol uh, the lcs yeah or what's going on with StarCraft tournament, and now it's like, you never believe what this politician did. Let's react to it, everyone. You know, and that's kind of where the meta of streaming content is going. It's very depressing what you just said, but I agree with it. But I'm I've even noticed it in my own viewing habits too. I'm not sure how much of it's the algorithm influencing me or me just gravitating towards what is salacious and interesting yeah. and. Uh, the 5,000th LCS game is not as titillating as, you know, Logan Paul's stupid crypto zoo game that I got to watch a hundred videos about, <laughs> you know, Lord. like, you know. Ugh, that made my stomach turn just hearing you say it. Um, I, there's a guy on TikTok I follow who, uh, I don't know why I followed him for this, but every day his videos are nothing but this every day he reviews his morning pee and that's it. And I look at like like he reviews it like IGN review? Or? No, no, no. He'll look. So it doesn't even show it. He just looks at his camera. He's just peed, turns on his phone, says, all right, well, um, it's a little more yellow today. And I'm wondering if that's because I did this or this or this. He like talks about what may have caused his urine to brighten up or to be clear or I didn't drink enough water yesterday or whatever. That's all this guy does. Just reviews his uh, pee. I think you need to be honest with the people and say you watch it because you're worried one day he's going to rename his channel to the morning stream and you're ready to pursue legal action if he does. Uh, getting litigious. I'm going to keep an eye on that guy. See what's going on there. But it's an odd. What if one morning he like pees blood? What's that review going to be like? <laughs> well, it's pretty bad. And I'm going to the all, doctor's office. Eventually we all get sick. You know? Yeah, that's true. He does it long enough. You'll, you'll pee blood. The thing is like. But I guess what I'm saying is maybe there's a greater trend. We we have so flabbergasted ourselves with so much freaking content that I have heard, this is anecdotal, but I've heard some people say there's too much. And so I'm falling back on where I'm comfortable. And for a lot of those people, it's podcasts because they got on that in the early 2000s or something and they just feel comfortable here. It's a safe place to go back to. Um, it's a thing they can do while they work and do other things like they listen to us at 1.5 speed and sure. it's best we not think about that. Sure. But I mean, if all you did was watch League of Legends streams for five years straight, you're probably burned out on doing that. And now you want something else. So you'll take a guy who reviews his pee because it's just different enough. I don't know. Novelty is a thing with humans too, you know? Yeah. Like you just, like you said, you've watched five years of League or Hearthstone. It's not novel anymore. You kind of feel in the moment like I could do this forever, and then time goes by, and you're like, "Eh, I'm good." Yeah, I think you're right. And I think I think gaming has had its moment with the surge of the internet, and now we're mining anything we can for interest and novelty. Yep, and we're settling in, folks. We're settling in. That's the stage we're in. Speaking of, I mean, it's sorry, just to belabor the point a few moments longer, but the like. The Johnny De- Depp trial, not the trial itself, but all every content creator under the sun that you kind of have a passing knowledge of making content, like, kind of broke me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it kind of yeah. just felt it hurt. Like, yeah. 
you're a gamer, but all of a sudden this has turned into a thing. Everyone's got to watch. Like, who cares? It's a divorce. They happen every day in our countries. Yeah. Like, dysfunctional, abusive divorce is like, who gives a shit? Like, and I, you know. Well, it turns out a lot of people give a shit. Yeah, yeah. No, know, they don't give like, a shit. They give a shit about ogling and making fun and making judgment calls. They don't actually give a shit about domestic well, abuse. That, you know? and because it, it's a, like it's it's tabloid search terms. Like, there's a reason tabloids say, like, Queen Elizabeth is abducted by aliens. <laughs> right. Because a lot of people are into the royal family, and that's a salacious thing. Like, it, literally, the world's become the National Enquirer. It's also uh, not new. I mean, remember when Court TV launched on the back of the O.J. Simpson trial? Right, yeah, like, this yeah. has been the story forever. It just comes in cycles. I just hate The when... methodology of obtaining it changes, but human nature has remained ever the same. Mm -hmm. I just hate you can tell people stream. all they want, that you shouldn't care about this, you shouldn't find this interesting. I agree didn't stop me from watching it. <laughs> I, I just hate that the gamer space was invaded with, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there was always that stuff, but that felt like other people do that stuff. I game, you know, like I don't spend time learning about Beyonce because I want to know about thrall. I'm a nerd. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like I don't, always I don't give a shit about Beyonce. it. I don't yeah. want, I, I'm not reading cosmopolitan. I'm reading, uh, video game <laughs> or whatever that whatever that magazine is right and right. now it's like so all your gaming content guys are like well i've got all this audience why don't i keep them around and get juice my viewers by doing stuff that i can convince them to care about by reacting and memeing to it yeah and then bring in other people who don't give a shit about video games that's what i mean like i think every content creator in the gaming space end goal is just to become a drama channel if you're trying to pile the numbers up like that's the yeah, no one's happy with yeah. just what they what they got. Anyways. It's permanent growth. That's, Sorry, anyway. that's a, it's a, a bit of a soapbox thing, but it just I I feel like it hurts esports. It hurts a lot of different things. So what did we used to do for your? What would we call it? Bose Corner. And I had some music for it. Only. And my brain is like, oh fuck. No, that isn't it. That's not it. <laughs> you gave yourself work. Although, yeah, that's work now. I got to go fix that. But <laughs> I don't I don't remember what the I don't remember what we played. But anyway, thank you for the Bose Corner. I always enjoy it. Uh, the bozone layer. The bozone, bozone layer has the, the X Files sound. Oh, <laughs> that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, but that's usually when you're being conspiratorial. I think you're dead on yeah. with this. This isn't conspiratorial uh, at all. Uh, all right. Well, we should talk about what we played this week. And uh, that'd be a good thing because there's a few reasons why. Uh, number one, I played a game that I am so stoked to talk about. Now, I know I do this a lot. All right. And I'm still. <laughs> obsessed with dave the diver still current doing all sorts of stuff there still playing world of warcraft every day i even le I leveled the warlock from zero to 40 don't ask me why i don't want to get into it but i did no one told I me i don't understand why that seems like no one told me that, it, that the demonology spec for warlocks was so much damned fun i don't believe you i can't i can't believe it myself <laughs> I john i don't believe you warlock has Never been fun. I agree with you in the past. That's why I never cared to go back and look. But man, that's a fun spec. Holy shit. It's just nonstop barrage of like creatures you're summoning from the nether. It's fantastic. It's so good. Anyway, uh, I did that. I even played Doom Eternal. But nice. This, I did, yeah, I think I'm going to get back into playing that more. That Doom, dude, Doom's great. Doom, Doom Eternal is so good. It I, is I, good. I, I like 2016. If you tell me, hey, I don't like the new one. I like 2016. I'm like, great. It's great. That's yeah. also a good souffle. Yeah. But Doom Eternal is, for me, oh. Best in oh, slots. Chef's kiss for Bo. Chef's kiss. Um, <laughs> no, I played a bunch of that and then really enjoyed my time. But these are all things we've talked about before. The game I want to tell you about today sounds like it's not a game I would enjoy. But I was wrong. I just you, pulled it up. You're right. Yeah, you'd think. So uh, this game is called Chained Echoes. And it is a game on Steam that is uh, enjoying some renown. People really like this game. And I was, it keeps recommending on my Steam Deck to get it. And uh, I also keep hearing that like Stardew Valley is like one dude made this game. And I always respect that for whatever reason. I just think it's cool when one guy can make a rad game that seems like it took a team of 100. I just don't know how they pull that stuff off. I'm in awe of single developers. Is that what gets you on board? Did oh. you know Final Fantasy XIV was made by one guy? <laughs> yeah, one Yoshi P out there cranking away <laughs> yep. in Game Maker, getting it done. 
so this game is called Chain Echoes, and uh, their own description of the game goes a little bit like this. Here's how they describe it. Take up your sword, channel your magic, uh, and board your mech, or board your mech. Chained, e- Chained Echoes is a 16-bit style RPG set in a fantasy world where dragons are as common as piloted mech suits. And you might say, well, that doesn't sound that interesting. This is a very cool turn-based combat JRPG with a bunch of story. And I think the reason I like it is they know me. <laughs> First of all, I love 16-bit era. You know, that whole aesthetic is totally, I love it. Right. No, no problem there. That's always a, a win for me. Um, and they, and there's a ton of that looks really nice. Uh, beautiful animations, great character art, great battle art, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the music's really good. I would say it's more like PlayStation one era music mixed with 16 bit era gameplay. And, uh, they do some things that make me happy. Like there are no random battles. You don't just run around and boodly and now you're fighting which is a lot of games do that and then whatever it's fine. I don't it's not my favorite way to play. I'd much rather uh, engage the things I'm going to fight on purpose. Even if I even if I'm fighting the same number of times, like the same battles, I'd rather choose when I do it. I just feel like it gives me agency that may or may not be artificial, but I still like it. Anyway, so I get to choose who I fight when I fight him. Uh the I don't like RPGs where my magic points, MP or my uh my uh, life points uh, or health points, HP. <laughs> this has been in your education about HP and MP. Anyway, <laughs> I, I don't know why I had to XP say those things. <laughs> so, yeah, I wait to hear about XP. Things are going to get real nuts. Um, but anyway, they, so it, I don't like the games that that, that, that that stuff's not replenished after each battle. It just bugs me. I'm like, I don't want to manage a bunch of food and get a bunch of drinks just because <laughs> I didn't what? heal up between battles. It just bugs me. I don't know why. In JRPG specifically, by the way. That's where I'm This is not how it works in real life, Scott. I know, but this is a game, damn it, and I want it gamified. <laughs> so this game heals you up and give, and refills your meters when you're done with each battle. They're still challenging battles. I've already died once. Um, but I was motivated to go back and try again. And it has the trappings of all the stuff you think about when you think of JRPGs from that era but also a whole bunch of modern kind of quality of life stuff. And it's great. I'm super hooked in. I think the story's really good in a way that these usually aren't for me. They're usually way too melodramatic and way too anime. This is not that. Um, The characters so far, I'm not that far in, but I think I have three people on my team. They're all really good so far. I like the battle system. They have an overdrive system that is, I don't know if this is unique to the game, but... But basically, you you get into a groove after a few attacks, and once you're in that groove, all your abilities that would use magic points are uh, the the cost is cut in half, and so there's an advantage, obviously, to doing that. And uh, what else happens? You uh, oh, it it improves your like uh, your uh, initiative, so you might jump ahead on one of the turns because you're in this groove. The problem is there's this little meter and it'll tell you, oh, if you're about to use this spell, it's going to move the meter forward. And if you move it too far forward, you're going to be in burnout mode. And when you're in that mode, things are more expensive. You aren't always first in line. You don't get first attack, these kinds of things. So you want to try to keep it. Describe my life. (laughs) You want to keep it in like your happy little zone, little green zone there. And there's ways to do it. So like, you can see that if I use this guy's spell, this AOE spell, it's going to move my needle up. But if I, the next guy, do a healing spell because somebody's hurt, that will actually move my needle down and keep us more in the zone. And it's a fun strategy to try to manage. Um, I really like it. Anyway, again, I'm early, but I so far I think Chain Echoes is bad ass. So and- this game popped up on my radar a little bit and uh, instantly, like, got me to go huh because what people were saying is this is basically a love letter to chrono trigger and final fantasy 6 yeah and i was like oh two of my favorite games of all time you have my attention mm-hmm. so uh, this has been an immediate wish list um especially after your glowing recommendation i'm i am gonna play this i'm gonna get this i think you would love it um the, one of these reviews says, at first I thought it was Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI, but I believe it is Xeno Gears plus Final Fantasy VII in the style of Chrono Trigger, which is interesting. I mean, you said Chrono Trigger. You got me. I mean, 
You knew how to sell me. You said the two words together that just gets me. The other thing I love about it is it's 100% certified for Steam Deck. Runs great on Steam Windows. Runs great on Steam Mac. Like It works on everything flawlessly. Saves are everywhere. If I got a long meeting, I can pull this up on my Mac and play. And if I'm on my PC, I can play it there and I can play it in bed on the other thing. Great sound effects. Just a really nice package and... Uh, I can't believe it's one guy. It just blows my mind. These people that do this, that that's some. I don't know. Like that's. I always think of the the Stardew Valley guy just because he's a famous one. But they're the bows of the world. Like, they are the bows of the Bo world. Bo wants to go do when he when he that's drops right. his job. He just wants to go make something and be the one guy in a story. And I will rave about your game, Bo, when you do it. When you do it, you'll be my guy. I rave about. But yeah, I love it. I love it. single developers. There's something about it just blows my mind, and I think they're auteurs, and I respect it. Anyway, it's only twenty four bucks. Totally worth every penny so far, and I am loving it. So I'm going to keep playing that. Speaking. Of, oh, that's Chained Echoes for those at home who missed it the first. People time. are saying it's on Game Pass. Um, oh I heard no way! Someone say it's only on console Game Pass. So let oh. me. I have PC Game Pass readily available. Maybe it's loading slow. Let's see. I hadn't heard this at all. I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't put it in both. There it is. Is yeah. it? Is it there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man! Look, Ooh, I'm gonna install this right. Well, you, not right now. I you need to, it, John. Right? You especially you need to play it because your love of that era of stuff. I I want to hear what you think of it. Uh, it's so far. It's just it's it's drenching me in happiness. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right. The other game I played another, um, <laughs> I was into the pixels this week, I guess. Uh, I played pixel cup soccer. Have you heard of it? No. Uh, well, let nope. me tell you about it. No, no, nope. nope, never heard. Um, we don't really talk about sports games on this show, but pixel cup soccer ultimate edition. It's called, they've had a few other versions. It's all rolled into this one, but, uh, came out last year toward the end of the year. It was in beta for a long time or open early access for a long time. And it's soccer, but done in an old school kind of way. So you feel like maybe you're on a Genesis or a SNES playing this. And it just is like fundamental arcade style, tons of modes, create your own characters, create your own team, do playoffs, all that kind of stuff. It's like what you expect out of a game like this. And I think it's great. If you're just in the mood for a little gold kicking run across the thing pass it to a guy last second kick it in one timer kind of business uh pixel cup soccer is pretty rad and i think it is this looks great yeah it does right it's beautiful like for for just a little pixel art game this looks awesome yeah there's things here that are going on visually that you're not doing on 30 year old consoles right like they're well sure yeah you couldn't do the the lighting and the shadows and the 3d but like yeah, there's something that they're doing with the with the way it's all the look, the shadows, the way the camera is positioned. It just looks really slick. Yep, snow and 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 wind and clouds and like all this trippy stuff. There's a whole campaign mode with a bunch of story stuff in it. Uh I love it. I really love it. It's my you know what? I'll go ahead and say it. The best sports game of 2022 was this game. <laughs> yeah, game of the year. Game of the year. Uh, <laughs> Put it down. I like sports games at times. Like I'm not a just like an all time kind of. I don't want to play all the time. Not buy Madden every year kind of guy. But I do like playing sports games. And I'm and I'm usually it's something like this that I crave. Something maybe a little older style or whatever. I don't need ultra realistic FIFA. It's not my jam. But this is, and it's great. And again, another great Steam Deck game. Uh, plays great wherever you play it. So check that out. That's Pixel Cup Soccer. And I started Cult of the Lamb. It's too early yeah. to really give a review because I barely cracked it. Uh, but this new patch sounded so exciting uh, that I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab it. And so far, it's pretty rad. It's I'm not, again, not very far, but I've done enough to establish my little town to start to have minions to do the whole like give a you know sacrifice a minion for some uh, blessing going into the actual battle part of the game and fighting and coming back and then using those resources to upgrade things and I get to plant and harvest food all that dumb shit I like and uh the sense of humor is great I mean we were all kind of eyeing this back when it launched it's another one of you know these these great um Oh, who who publishes these? Freaking Devolver. Devolver, Devolver Digital, one, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Their games rarely let me down, 
And this so far seems really cool. So I am too early to say, but I'll talk more about it next week when I've had some more time with it. Um, that's it. That's all I played. I mentioned all of that other stuff I'm still doing. John, let's jump to you and talk about uh, who, who killed chaos. It's Stranger in Paradise or Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin. How's that going? That I am so glad I get to finally talk to you all about Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin, a game that is just the craziest thing i've ever played uh, imagine if you were three men in a gap buying clothes and you got transported to a final fantasy universe run by a tired and overworked dm who was going to retell the campaign story of final fantasy one and one of the players there wants nothing to do with the game that you are presenting and is letting the dm know every chance he gets that wow. uh, he, there's no creativity in Jack. So uh, you you play Jack, um, the main character, the the primary Gap shopper. Um, Th this guy I'm, here. I'm filling I'm here in. To kill I'm filling chaos. In. Is that the guy? Yeah, that's Jack. Okay. that's Jack right, right there. All right. And uh, Jack's story is he wants to kill chaos. Hmm. There's nothing else you need to know because that's all he's gonna tell you. Anything he wants to do. It's to kill chaos. Mm. Why does he want to kill chaos? I feel like I should kill chaos. Oh, there's is this chaos? Nope, not chaos. Well, I'm gonna go fight chaos. <laughs> it's um, it is like awful and brilliant at the same time. Like it walks that fine line of just you're shaking your head at it, going, "The hell am I watching? Mm. What am I hearing right now?" All the other characters are fairly normal, but Jack is so out of place in this story that it 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 just doesn't make any sense. They're like, Jack, you got a cut on your face. And he's like, nothing that a little spit won't take care of. You know Ew. what he looks like? He <laughs> looks like if Cloud Strife was a character in Justified. <laughs> <laughs> I want that story arc. That sounds like fun. <laughs> I'm oh Cloud Strife. I don't care about you, That's Raven right. Gibbons. I'm flo flooding Kentucky with pills or whatever. <laughs> uh, so hold on a second. I'm a little confused about this. In the original game, was there this? Did this character exist? This character, I mean, of Jack? you could make a character a Warrior of Light, and I think four might have been the naming limit okay. Um, okay. for your character. So Jack would work. You can name you can name your warrior Jack. And uh, he could be your canonical hero but, of life. But weren't they like in like robes and like fancy wizard hats and stuff? Oh, it, it doesn't take long for Jack to shed his gap attire and put on some fancy fantastical robes. Okay, because sure. in here the guy he a hundred percent does. You look like a complete doofus by the end of the first mission. You got a ninja mask on and a flowing robe and weird pointy shoes. Like he gets there pretty quick. But it does not change the fact that he starts wearing just what you'd find at a store. Okay. And that's why it feels like it feels like a D and D campaign to me, because one, they show up dressed as just people. Now they're like, I got a crystal, you got a crystal. Guess we're friends now. Let's go kill chaos. Mm. Supposed to be four of us, but oh well, let's go do it. Mm. Um but then every time Jack gets a, a opportunity to grow as a character, show emotion, he's all he wants. I just told him I'm gonna kill chaos, and that's what I'm gonna do. Like that's it. <laughs> There's nothing else. The king's like, the prophecy shows that there are only four warriors. There's only three of you, and he's like, we're the ones offering to kill chaos. So, <laughs> Wait, so, so the ad was the other option. We all ripped on that ad, mm. but the ad was like accurate like he is constantly yes. talking about it okay all right yes and the thing that's so annoying Not is ad, so this trailer. game has a has a stream safe mode because it has a lot of licensed music in it and the licensed music does nothing to enhance the game it's played quietly going into loading screens like one of the first things you get is frank sinatra i did it my way as it's introducing jack and it it doesn't even get to the crux of the song. The, the It cuts off before it gets to it. <laughs> it just plays the setup and then it gets to the whole point of the song and it, nope, too busy. Let's load it in. And then there's the notorious, like, this girl who's a very anime girl is just like, 
I decided that I was going to be the one to kill Chaos. So I couldn't find Chaos because Chaos, it turns out, is a concept. So I thought maybe I could become Chaos and destroy it from within. And then Jack's just like, bullshit. And then he just starts <laughs> playing a song on his iPad. It cuts to a loading screen so you don't even hear much of the song. Then he's outside, takes his earphones off, and the song's over. And then he keeps talking. Weird. It's it, it, that sounds as weird as I expected. The bizarre thing I've ever played in my life. But you know what? It's actually kind of a fun game. I kind of like how it plays. It's got an interesting combat system. Um, I'm playing on easy, which is probably a mistake. It's really easy on easy. Mm. Um, but it's got cool weapons, uh, cool mechanics around it. It's a little menu heavy and a little confusing, but... Uh, it's snappy. It's got some Dark Souls elements and that there's save points that respawn enemies and stuff like that, and you're gaining job points, but it it is one of the weirdest video game experiences I've ever played, and from a narrative perspective, this game is just absolutely insane. Isn't it, it weird, though? I, they'll make this, but they won't do a Deus Ex Well, I guess they're, we'll get that now that the companies are separating, yeah. but... But still, like, doesn't that seem weird? It's like, hey, what do you guys want to work on? How about Deus Ex? That sold well. Eh, how about we have this thing with a guy in sneakers who wants to kill chaos and it's all weird and doesn't really fit in the universe? Like, that's that's weird. It's a weird choice. It's, it's weird. The whole game is weird, but it is super cool. I'm glad I'm finally playing it. It was a big debate on if I was going to stream it or not. And finally, I was just like, you know, what? I'm just going to play this game. Yeah. And, uh, it's fun. It's it's a fun game to play, but good lord. Every time I'm faced with a decision or a cutscene, I'm just like, what is this? What are we doing? <laughs> How did we get here as a as a society? How did we reach this moment? Yeah. Um, it's the closest thing I've ever seen in video gaming, maybe outside of like Deadly Premonition, where it's so bad it's good. Yeah. And, and that's that's kind of how you know I what? feel about I can the respect story that. Of this I thing. can respect that. How long have you played and how long is it? Is this like a huge game? Uh, I don't know how what percentage into it I, I am. I've probably put in an hour or so. So I'm not very far. I got far enough to kill who we thought was Chaos but wasn't Chaos. was actually just a lady trying to become Chaos. But then she just joins you because she's like, well, I didn't become Chaos, so I guess I'll just join you. So he she just, has a crystal, so we let her. He just turned into a cactus and ran away. Hold on a second. I'm going to show this to the chat. Okay, <laughs> okay so he, kill, he gets hurt. Looks like he may die even. Oh, no, the cactus was separate. All right. Yeah, that's that's a cactar. That's a that's an enemy that just popped up. You yeah. got to fight him. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, just... I think he did die. I think the, the cactar got him with the thousand needles. The thousand oh, needles cactars. of cactar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the hundred hand slap of cactar. In thousand needles, so so wait a minute. This is Yoshi P joint. Does it tie into? No, this is okay. This isn't Yoshi P. This is actually um, who did it? Is it Ninja Theory? I, I can't oh, remember. Yeah, it's it's Team not, Ninja or something it, like that. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the it's it's one of the Ninja developers uh, <laughs> using the Final Fantasy license. Okay, all right. So I think I, I, yeah, because I think it's whoever made Ninja Gaiden, right? Like I think it's supposed to be like. Ninja Gaiden, but well, that explains this combat because it looks like yeah. Ninja Gaiden to me. Yeah, you know, that's I mean, Ninja Theory that makes that one, right? I think. Right, they have Ninja in their name. I know. Man, see, Ninja I'm Gaiden looking it great. up yeah. right now, seeing if somebody's going to tell us anyway. Team Ninja is the developer. Oh, oh. Team Ninja. Okay. Team okay. Ninja, uh, creators of Neo, uh, Neo Two, uh, Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, them. Ninja Gaiden. Woo! I like that game those games <laughs> those were cool yeah i mean the not the originals but the the new the ones the 3D, 360 the 3d ones. battle or yeah action rpg version. or not 3d or sorry not 360 they may have been original xbox but whatever no, those were like, those were great those were fun yeah something like that button mashers yeah fun. the xbox yeah or i, I want to say they were sony no they could have been on multiple Platform. Oh, yeah. good point. The, re yeah. the remakes, the remake era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The old side scrollers. Yeah. I don't even think I ever played, but um, I loved it. Those were I was like my favorite game on the NES. Really? I mean, ninjas were there's very few ninja games, and that one was just very cool. We're very supposed to weird. do a whole uh, play retro on those. Uh, maybe I'll call you and we'll do a little quick interview. Yeah, they're tough. It. They're like 
they're the from software games of that day you yeah. know kind of oh, yeah. i mean just you had limited lives and then you have to start at the beginning of the whole game if you die too many times john tell me about this dial so when he attacks it's like you got to stop on a on almost a wheel of fortune type dial to decide what the attack is or something so that's when you're using magic for like a mage weapon like yeah. a mace um and you pull it up and you select which element of spell you want to use and then how long you hold it is the power of the spell okay so because it's an action game, you know, you don't want to just stand in one place forever. So you can either fire a weaker spell quick or hold the button longer at a greater risk for a more potent spell. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else about it. It sounds like it's a weird thing. I so. I recommend, I don't know. I, I don't know if you should buy this game. I have no idea. Uh, it. I'm having fun with it. I'm going to keep playing it. I want It's the game I want to know better, but it's a little bit obscure. Like I said, it's very menu heavy, so I get lost in the sea of menus, and I kind of just reached a point where I was like, I don't know, stabbing stuff with daggers is working for me. I don't know if I need to complicate this, but there's a lot of like switching between weapons and new abilities and switching out weapons as a part of a combo and all it like it goes deep and i just i haven't gotten i didn't need to on the difficulty i was on i didn't need to go that deep so just hacking and slashing stuff and then everything blows up into weird red crystals uh it's very strange oh yeah i see that way he's pulling a the jaw of a of a wolf apart and the it's like you turn into a big crystal blood monster when he does it he's gonna do it right yeah here, yeah nope, it's didn't it's I, and I again, I can't tell if the game how serious the game is being, and that's the that's the craziest <laughs> part is I I'm like, do they think this is cool or do they know this is not cool and that's part of the pretend we're playing here? Mm. Um, am I supposed to like Jack or am I supposed to think he's as insufferable as he seems to be? Because mm. um, he's just not into anything. Like the princess sees him and is like Jack, and he just goes ugh. Ugh. And then she she comes up and she's like, I have two favors to ask of you. And he's like, Ugh, let's hear it. <laughs> like, he just can't, can't be bothered with anything except killing chaos. I kind of love that. So, it's all anything it, in his way is just one more thing he has to deal with to get in the way of chaos. I get it. I could see that. Yeah. His one companion here is still wearing his stupid sneakers. That's That would throw me. Get rid of those damn things. The starting outfits are so bad. Yeah. It's so, so bad. And they just show up. Like, that's literally the setup of the game. Like, three guys walk up to a gate, and they're like, hey, man. And he turns around mad because people are talking to him, and he's Jack, and he doesn't want to talk to people. Yeah. And he's like, what do you want? Yeah. And then they show him they have crystals, and then he pulls out a crystal because he has one, too. And then they all do like a fist bump together, and now they're bros because they all got crystals. And then, like, no words needed. Like, he's just like, I'm here to kill chaos. And they're like, I guess we're here for the same thing. And he's like, good. And then they all bro fist and then go in to talk to the king. They really it's do. It's the weirdest they thing. They actually bro fist, like, pump. Uh, yes, fist they bump. all put their little fist in the middle and they all meet. They've done it twice. <laughs> Who made this? The founder of Hooters? Like, I did. <laughs> Feels like oh, such no, a so, such a so weird good. thing. All right, I feel like this is a more positive than negative experience so far that you're describing. I to think. Us. It, I think. I think the hard part is is to gro like listening to to him to John. You listening to you talk about it as an irony thing. Like if they made a character who was intentionally kind of like this, it's kind of fun and hilarious. Yeah. But it's a bit concerning to think maybe they made this guy because they all <laughs> thought he was awesome. And it makes me kind of not want to play it if they're just like, no, being like this, being a dude like this is the the tits. You know, it's like the best. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, I, I, <laughs> this is this is the uh, best male hero, cool, we think boys will like, I presume. And mm. then, then I'm like, ew, gross. But, yeah. yeah. I think that's what everyone took away that it was Mimi. And then, from the original trailer and part two and when square enix responded the way they did everyone you know it felt like oh you're serious oh yeah oops yeah they you mean know? it so i don't know so john so you've played it and it, it doesn't seem like that's resolved anything for you where it's like no i'm still in, in the middle 
I'm like, I'm having fun. Um, I'm enjoying the experience, but I'm just like constantly my mouth is just dropping open. I'm like, what are we doing? Mm. What is this? Yeah. But the combat's like, good. You kind of had me there, you know. So you know in Final Fantasy that you're in town and you walk around, you talk to people, they don't have a lot to offer, but you talk to them anyway? Yeah. The, they've gotten rid of the walking around town, but the element of talking to people with nothing to say is still in the game. <laughs> you go to a menu and you select <laughs> talk, and it cuts to a fountain, and you pick from a list of people to talk to in front of this fountain, and it's like, do you want to talk to Angsty Guard? And he pops up and he's like... Oh, hey Jack! Oh, you're you're off to fight chaos, boy. I sure hope you beat him. It sure would be nice if things improved around here. That's it. <laughs> it's like, do you want to talk to newbie guard? And then he pops up. He's like, Hey Jack, I know I'm new, but I hope you beat chaos. Mm. And everyone knows Jack. <laughs> he's like a known thing in the world. Yeah, people are stoked about Jack because he's got a crystal, and there's a prophecy about people with crystals. Okay. Well, my aunt would be a huge deal in this world because she's got she's into crystals. <laughs> yeah, really that's it. the DLC hit. Yeah, my <laughs> aunt, you play with my aunt. She'll be dressed about the same as these guys at the beginning, so it'll all be fine. Turns out the Stranger of Paradise is Utah. I, oh, hell yeah. I'm glad to hear that someone finally played it, though, because I just wanted to hear what this was. Uh, kind of get an idea, right? It's the first time yeah. we've really talked about it, so thank you for you know eating the whatever pill. Thank color. you for your service, John. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. I'll exactly. tell you if I keep playing. If you keep playing, let us know. Um, you also played Old World, which I am very fond of, and uh, I'm very excited to hear about this, but I'm a little worried because it just says tutorials in here. So what happened? Yeah, I tried to play Old World legitimately, and it was like putting on someone else's shoes. I think I said this before, where it's like it doesn't really fit, but it works like a shoe, and you're a little grossed out because you know it's not what you're used to. Yeah. And it doesn't feel quite right, but you know you could still step on rocks and stuff and be okay. That's kind of what playing Old World just like going in fresh was like. It's like, oh, this is like civilization, except it's very different. And so I decided I really want to get into this. I really want to play a chill game like Civilization again. And before I just go, well, I'll just play Civilization again. Uh, I thought, I have Old World. I need to play it. I haven't played it since it was in early access. Um, let me give it a go. And I'm going to sound a lot like when Bo tried Crusader Kings 3. I was like, okay, well, I got to learn how to play this thing because I don't want to just do the shoes analogy again mm -hmm. so i started doing the tutorials and it's good that i am because every now and then they introduce a concept like how research works where it's cards that you draw and then you put cards in a discard pile so you have to kind of understand that it's not a case of oh i'll research this and then i'll research that next that you are actually making a, a detailed choice in that regard but then you are also still doing very Civ things. It's like, here's a bunch of hexagons and I'm making a scout walk around and look for barbarians. So there's a lot of similar, and then there's every now and then a weird wrench thrown in, and it's a lot of reading. So I'm slowly going through it, but I do, I do think I'm really going to like this game once I learn it. Um, it's like, yeah, because basically it's Crusader Kings and Civ had a baby. That's the game. Yes. And that sounds great because yeah. I, I hear the stories about Crusader Kings 3 and all the like, you know, ruling and the assigning a, a lineage and all that stuff. And I always get so jealous that people get that experience. But I really like the turn base and style of Civ. And so the two of those things coming together um, really sounds good to me. Yeah. So I really want to I really want to really spend more time with it, but it's slow going. If anybody's ever done a tutorial for like a Civ game or this style of game, there is no way to make it exciting. And I don't think they even try anymore. I think they're just like, well, you're going to have to read a lot. So just get ready and settle mm -hmm. in. And it's not a terrible tutorial. I'm I'm learning, but it's it's slow going and it's a lot of hey click this hexagon good very good you're a good person you've for done doing it that. Yeah, now let's done move it. on the whole the whole movement order stuff at first it seemed very obtuse and weird to me and i couldn't figure it out um because it's not the same as civ where it's just like oh you can move two spaces with this unit and this one can move three and 
a different terrain affects it or whatever. Some of that stuff's still at play, but there's this whole movement order thing. What's it called? Uh, well, whatever it is, those little scrolls. They're basically orders. Yeah. And um, you can exceed them by expending a certain kind of like king's currency that will help you move further, but your troops get fatigued and they're tired and you kind of force them to keep marching, you know, these kinds of concepts. And that affects you politically. And, you know, there's all these other layers to it that can be a little obtuse at first, but I ended up loving the order system. It's a really cool strategic kind of tactical way to, to behave. Cause you're like, well, I'm only going to use four on this scout because I can save these for these two archers who can then use those work orders or those uh, orders to go do a thing that'll wipe out that city state. And then I'll deal with this later. Like it, there's, there's some of that going on that I really ended up liking, but it took me multiple games to get that figured out. Yeah, and I like that it ties to uh, your rulers because you will eventually have other people, like descendants, take over the the leadership role. I like that it's tied to um, legitimacy because, you know, that's a big part of being a ruler is how legitimate is your claim to the throne and stuff like that. And by having an important currency to playing the game tied to a stat like how legitimate we feel our ruler is... Like, that seems like that's going to work really well for you to make the uh, hard decisions of being a ruler where it's like, ah, we really need to we really need to make sure that this king is a is a mighty king recognized by everybody. And there's not going to be any doubt um, mm -hmm. so I can move my units more. Yeah, you know? that's true. That sort of and a lot of that is only comes from trial and error. And it's like, oh, yeah, right. If I depose this priest who's trying to usurp me. I'm going to gain a bunch of favor with the peasants and the people, but it's going to piss off my brother who really trusts that guy and values his counsel. And now he's going to try to stab me in the back, but, but then he slept with my wife. Like it's all that, that King's quest, the King's, uh, the other thing, what's it called? Not King's Crusader quest. Kings. Crusader the Kings. They insert all that stuff in there. So family drama, Game of Thrones level stuff. And then once you get the hang of the rhythm of all that though, it's so, I really dig it. I think you will too if you if you keep going, but it yeah. is that kind of game where it's like you got to be in that mood, right? If you're in the mood to kill chaos, this isn't your game. <laughs> but if you're in the mood for like a methodic sort of thinking, you know, I got to plan ahead and I'm gonna figure out how to do this, and you're gonna watch your little avatar of your king get older. And one time, I my my king lost an eye, so his little avatar painting lost an eye. That was pretty cool. I like watching that. And then your son takes over and he's kind of a dick and you're like, ah, oh, shouldn't have, shouldn't have had him do it. So then I have the sister like backstab him and try to take the crown and that stuff's fun, but yeah. you got to be in the right mood. So, uh, Oh, what do you think of the technology thing? Cause that's more like a card, almost like it's almost like a, uh, card mini game. It's interesting. Like yeah. you can see it from, uh, like thinking about it. Like you can't, you can't, in reality, you can't necessarily plan scientific breakthroughs and discoveries. I mean, you can sort of, to a degree, go like, eh, we're working in this direction, and oh, something happened. Um, but in theory, that's what the research time is. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that there is an element of randomness and sacrifice to choosing your scientific road you're going down. Right. Because it's not just a case of you're picking, like, I want... to. I don't even know if this is one because I haven't spent enough time in the game, but it's not it's not as cut and dry as, well, I'm going to learn wheel so that then I can do carts, <laughs> right. you know, on the right. next uh, when the next cycle comes up. Right. You can't exactly plan it that way. And it's more of like a bunch of things pop up or three things pop up. And it's like, well, I'm going to take this at the sacrifice of these other things because they go in a discard pile and you don't have the potential to get those back until the discard pile gets reshuffled. Mm -hmm. So you are basically making the choice that like, I'm giving up this technology for a period of time at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the very um, least you're putting it off. Yeah. A little more interesting than just like, well, I've got my build order. This is how I build my tech tree. And if that scares you, when you hear that out there listening, uh, the the cool thing about it is if you're if you're nervous about what to choose it does like star the ones they think are best for you at the time it's it's kind of like how your advisor works in Civ so you it'll have a little star on on the cards it thinks are best for your current trajectory but you don't have to take them you can still you know choose your own your own destiny but 
you know, it's there if you're if you're nervous, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, good. Well, I'm excited to hear what you end up doing with that. You also played a game that tempted me today, so nice job on that. I almost bought. I know. I noticed my my one little uh, name in this thing inspired not only you to tell me like, oh, I want to play it, but then the background graphic for Core coming up, mm -hmm. and that is Immortals: Phoenix Rising, a game you and I have gushed over uh, for a long while. Great game. Um, it was the game for the longest time that was basically what I was playing on my Xbox Series X exclusively, mm -hmm. um, and now. Uh, it's on PC, mm -hmm. and I was I thought, well, let me give it a try. Let me see how it is on the on the PC. Um, seems to work great. See, looks fine, plays fine. I haven't spent a lot of time with it because I was actually thinking about streaming it because I thought, you know, with how often you and I talk about how good this game is, I should really show how good this game is. It's worth streaming. Uh, the world yeah. needs to know. I agree. Because uh, Immortals: Phoenix Rising is an awesome game. Uh, it took me a while to get my head around it. Once it sort of clicked, I was like, man, this game is just fun. Fun as hell. Yep. Yeah, the, um, the part about it that, um, well, everyone's talking, to, we're going to talk about it more in a minute here, but Ubisoft's in all kinds of weirdness right now, right? Yeah. And everyone's talking about, oh, they just aren't doing anything new. This felt fresh and new, even though it was obvious this was a little bit of a Zelda Breath of the Wild play, and it was a little bit of a, well, what if we did a more stylized take on our already popular Assassin's Creed kind of game type yep. thing, but then made it a little bit more actiony or whatever. <laughs> what if we reused all these <laughs> same voice actors in different roles? Yes, exactly. Like there's <laughs> a lot of that going on, but even there's a lot of paying Peter and robbing Paul going on. It's the most original, most good time I've had with an Ubisoft game in five, six years, I think. It's, it has it's, damage it's, numbers too. And it has right. damage numbers. Exactly. I, actually, I, I, I bought here. it on sale for Xbox. It just didn't hook me, so I never really got into it. But you know, I like what I played. Yeah. Did you? Um, how much did you play of it? Just uh, uh, two hours, maybe. Like just the intro and hopping around a bit. Oh man, I really like it. I think I made a mistake buying it on Xbox. I felt like the draw distance wasn't very far. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't yeah. see that in mind. But uh, here's the thing, though. Like, um, the the it's it's op it's very open world, and I know you're hit and miss on those, right? Like kind of not your thing. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. I gotta have a good reason to play an open world game. Yeah. So I wouldn't say like it's hard for me to say like not a good game. Don't take that. Just <laughs> it seemed awesome. I just didn't. It didn't hook me. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so still fun then, John. A. It's good stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna play more of it. It's a big game. Yeah. Like that's the other <laughs> thing lot. is like. I kind of thought going off the back of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where it was like, oh, we're gonna do more Greek myth stuff. Like, maybe this would be a more bite-sized take on it. Um, but no, this game is actually pretty long. And uh, I played a lot of it, but I, I feel like I still only got through about half of the game. Um, so I want to dive in and do more of it. Uh, because it is... It, there's just something... It scratched that itch of like, oh, I'm going to just go over there and solve a puzzle or solve a shrine or do this which you know you hear a lot of zelda breath of the wild fans talk about mm -hmm. and i can't draw the comparison because i never played breath of the wild um this is as close as i got to it so it's kind of the game that makes me understand why that game is popular because it very much had that like oh man this is just a cool world where it's like yeah what do i feel like going and doing i feel like going and doing this yeah, um, definitely. Every time that. I unlocked something, it felt meaningful and it kind of changed the way the game played in a fun way instead of just like, oh, here's some arbitrary stuff. So I, I had a really, really great time with it. I want to I want to kind of see it through to the end. I think flying is really give, fun. Or the gliding, I guess, not really flying. Um, the mounts are really fun and the weapons don't break. Like Breath of the Wild, number one seller right there for me. People were probably waiting. Okay, they mentioned Breath yeah, of the Wild. Is Scott going to bring that up? Scott yep. mentions that the weapons broke. But it does have like climbing stamina and some of those other concepts, and they're fine. I, those don't bother me. It's just breaking. It's just constant breaking weapons I don't like about Breath of the Wild. That game would be the ultimate game of all time if they didn't have that shit in there. Drives me yeah, another game I only played for two hours and never experienced weapon breaking, so I have no complaints. Oh, well, there you go. But you only played it for two hours. <laughs> it's the only, yeah. it's the only thing. <laughs> it's like, it, actually, it's funny. Phoenix Rising I had the exact same experience as Breath of the Wild, which was play a couple hours. And yeah, get your fill. 
It's like going to an expensive movie. I get it. It all works. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a gift, so I actually feel guilt about it. Oh, you, a little bit of from, guilt? Yeah. I feel like it's a pull your gamer card kind of thing. Like, if you're going to buy a Switch and play one game, like Breath of the Wild seems like the best game, the best in slot for a Switch. And yeah. you own it thanks to a gift and still didn't play it. Yeah. But whatever. That's all right. The guilt is... Also, incidentally, just I can't talk about it in games I played, but I think I got some Nintendo gift money for Christmas. So I bought Link's Adventure. Oh, the remake of the oh, Game yeah. Boy game. Yeah. That's but a really good remake. I haven't played it. I've, had, I've owned it for like weeks. I just can't be bothered to... That is an excellent game. I'm like, I think about it and I'm like, no, I'm not going to play that. But it's an, <laughs> I'm like, it's why an did I buy excellent, it? I don't know. Excellent remake of that game, though. It's, so if you do yeah, get around like to it, you'll be happy. I love the style of it and I want to try it, but I just, I can't, it's just, when it's time to maybe try it, I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't, I can't explain it really. It's just, yeah. That's how I am with Midnight Suns. I can't explain it either. Yeah. I don't know why I haven't done it. It's on sale again, even. People, well, I that won't game's pull like, your gamer card if you don't pull mine. That game? <laughs> <laughs> Deal? <laughs> wow. It's like a sleepover when I was seven. Just kidding. That's terrible. All right, moving on. <laughs> wow. You yeah. had very different sleepovers than me. <laughs> that sounded way worse than I expected. Well, they so. play cards. It's okay. Uh, let's move on to... Oh, and you're still playing Fortnite and Final Fantasy and all that. So It's still raiding, yep. I guess, in there? Doing the raid? Uh, yeah, new, new raid came out, uh, and it's good. Yeah, it's like I actually people don't talk a lot. They're they're mostly like a story, single player game, story, story. Uh, Raiding in Final Fantasy is extraordinarily fun. Um, so I, I highly recommend it. Um, and this is John guaranteed. talking, by the way. OK, yeah, I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> yeah. Scott wanna... raided with me. He knows how I feel about. Yeah, raiding. I don't want to undersell. This is an important moment because you you know, we've talked about it before. We don't have to get into it. But John's braiding experience in WoW was a mixed bag of I'll stand back and let you guys do trash, and then <laughs> hopefully I get an upgrade tonight. See you later, and it's fine. But how to make that experience more fun? You've clearly found it in Final Fantasy. It does it for you. Isn't the way. FF Scott. community more account hold people more accountable than in WoW? <laughs> WoW, they're just abusive. <laughs> Scott, here, let me let me tell you a little secret that might unlock this mystery to you uh, all together. Go. There are two types of rating in Final Fantasy. There's yeah. normal rating and alliance rating. In normal rating, there is zero trash. Oh. None. It is okay. just you queue for a boss fight, and then you go fight that boss. No trash at all? Like any tra What about traveling and things? You just still have to go a long you distance? You travel to the boss's room and fight the boss. Okay. And by travel, I mean you load into the boss's room and fight the boss. Okay, I kind of like that. For alliance raiding, that's the bigger raids yeah. where it's there's actually a flow. Maybe there's trash. In this one, you go straight to the first boss. You run down a little road, and then there's the boss. Yeah. And then you run through another little road, and then you have like three trash fights. Yeah. And then you fight a boss. Fight. And then you have <laughs> one trash fight, and then a boss. Yeah. And then you go fight a boss. Okay. So there's like maybe three trash fights, and that's kind of it. That's sometimes pretty... they'll throw in a mini boss, but that's... okay. But still, mini boss could need drop you things, right? You can get some stuff, maybe. I don't think I don't think the mini boss oh. ever drops anything. But loot in that game. So when it's a new raid, so the previous raid, now this is unlocked, and you can roll on anything as much as you want. But right now, the way loot works in Final Fantasy when the raid is new is you go in. It drops, the, the gear is divided up kind of WoW style where it's like, okay, this drops for these jobs. Yeah. So these jobs can roll on it. Um, let's say a piece of gear drops that I can use on the first boss. Mm -hmm. As long as I haven't won anything this week, I can roll for it. Mm. So I roll for it. Anybody else that might need it, that needs it, can roll for it. Uh, you can also greed for it. But keep in mind, you only get one piece of loot per week, and it goes to the people who need it first. So you can need and greed. Um, and if I win, which I did in this case, I won the first piece of loot that dropped, I am now locked out from getting a piece of loot for that week. So guaranteed one upgrade for the week, got it. I can roll on the fun stuff that drops from the final boss yeah. as much as I want. Yeah. Um, but as far as actual hard loot upgrades, I'm now done. Now I'll still earn the currency that I can use to buy upgrades through a different means. So it's not like 
okay, progression has stopped. I can't do anything for my character. But then when the next week starts, I go in. If that same piece of loot drops, obviously I'm not going to roll on it because I don't need it. But then something else drops, roll on it. If I win it, I win it. If I don't, I can rerun the raid as much as I want. So I could do this raid over and over and over again. As long as I haven't gotten a piece of loot, I still have the potential to get loot for that week. Is it... uh... And so, because you're skipping trash, you're like in right away and running it as much as you want, as often as you want. Yeah, it takes about forty minutes or so. Okay, and that's is that just a bunch of phases with a boss, single boss, moving around and dropping fire and look out and move and. Yep. Okay. It's kind of a long raid though, or long boss fight. Forty minutes of just fighting the boss. Well, the, no, that's for the whole raid. Oh, for the entire thing. Okay. Yeah, like forty minutes to an hour for an entire like four boss raid is not bad. So there were nights we'd play heroes for like five rounds or games, and that would they would run forty five minutes each, and this you could do that one night. Yeah. It's not that much of a time commitment. Okay. No, now you've convinced it's easy. me. That sounds all right. That sounds pretty good. As somebody who's about to tiptoe into the new raid and wow at least lfr i don't know if i'm ready to join a team or any of that yet i don't know if i, I did hear because i'm gonna say something i want to say something nice about wow because i would say that you couldn't pay me to go back to wow raiding but one <laughs> nice thing i will say about wow is uh i heard like some of the really cool cosmetic things like uh there's a, a style that you can make your dragon mm-hmm. based on the big boss of this raid mm-hmm. And they're letting it drop an LFR. Yeah. I think that's really cool. I agree. Like, you want to talk about a positive change, kudos to WoW. That is something they should have done a long time ago. I agree. They're um, also they're also having cause cool. they have a new thing where it's cosmetics drop just as cosmetics. It's no longer like, oh, that loot drop that looks like a thing and that, therefore I now have its cosmetic. That's that's still true of everything that drops, but some of these are just straight up cosmetic drops. They have a whole different icon style. So when those drops, you right click them and you get a little bloom, kind of like when you get a new toy or a new pet and yeah. they're just added to your collection. You just are getting these styles now. And I think that's really cool. They're also going to add um, whites and. Uh, Finally, whites getting added to the game. Basically, tra- <laughs> trash, trash, trash. Uh, oh, what does that mean? Scott? What I mean because is like trash. Said it and I <laughs> only trash. pictured like some guy coming up and being like, Hello, we're the whites. <laughs> we're finally being represented. No, in like white, like trash whites, like like you know oh, white colored okay. loot. Uh, the stuff that doesn't have any stats on it, you can now right. a bunch Common of that. items. Yeah, all of that quality, white <laughs> okay, quality. I gotcha. All of it, all of it is now uh, you know transmogable, which is pretty cool. But anyway, well there you wow. go. There's your MMO update for the week. Bo, you've been playing some uh, the, some Borderlands Three. Boy, you're really hooked on that game right now. It's good. It was exactly the flavor I was looking for. All this time playing different games, searching for the flavor. I haven't gotten back to Borderlands 2 VR because Borderlands 3 is just that good. Um, Damn. It scratches the Diablo itch, and it's a shooter, and the guns are fun. I've, the guns are crazy. I have a Doom gun that plays like a note from Doom Eternal when I shoot the gun. No way. It's, like, it's, it's the super shotgun. Dun, 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 dun. It's super <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, I like that you know, they do that. I, sure. I got a gun that when I throw it, it splits into six walking guns and walks around and shoots things. I got a gun that doesn't shoot straight. It, they meet in the middle. Like, does he do these circle things? That's some contra business right there. Yeah, yeah, like the guns are like out of control. The loot is out of control. And like the story, you know, it's about as good as Borderlands 2. It's the same sort of deal. But uh, there's a lot of really good humor. There were some great podcaster jokes how Claptrap's going to start a podcast and he can't wait to shill for a mattress company. You know, um, and there was a pretty good, uh, uh, pretty good criticism of um, uh, games that release in beta but still ask for your money. So it's this janky beta where your NPC you're escorting is in a T pose and like walking around in a T pose. <laughs> really? And, they're, and at uh, one point you have to pick up a hundred, uh, like hundred items that are like pay, pay us like two thousand dollars and you can skip having to pick up all hundred of the items and you pay the money wow. and it's just like the satire in it is pretty it's actually pretty good um this I don't is like their, also... i don't like their streamer culture podcaster crap i hate that but other well, than the that... villains are great yeah they're the two villains are they're social media stars but that's yeah. how they're building up a cult of pandora but hate yeah it. they i mean well they're the villains you're supposed to not like them that's I mean, true that's... that's true maybe they succeeded yeah. there yeah good yeah, yeah. Like, you're like you're totally on board for like killing them like you know they just kind of 
they're kind of douchey and great. They're just not as douchey as Handsome Jack, but I'm playing the first of the DLCs and Handsome, it's called Handsome Jack or Moxie in the Handsome Jack Casino or something like that, but Handsome Jack is featured there, so you get your Handsome Jack. Oh, good. Um, and I've started a playthrough with Crofton because we played all of Borderlands 2, and I'm like, all right, listen, you're doing something, let's play. So not only am I playing on my main, but I'm starting a new playthrough multiplayer, um, and this game is it's really good, and I don't really need to play anything else right now because every I get home and I'm like, you know, I want to play more Borderlands Three. Nothing wrong with that. And um, they've solved Endgame uh, from Borderlands Two actually in a big way. There's torment levels called mayhem levels, and you can crank up as you get more powerful. Same as you do in Diablo, crank up the mayhem levels. There's lots of unlocks. They did a neat thing with events. Hmm. Because they're sort of done, I think, supporting the game. You can just turn the events on or off. So if you want to do the Valentine's Day event, you just flip it on oh, in the main menu. Nice. And you can just kind of do it and collect the gear and, sh- and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's... There's a lot I like about how they implemented the game. Like, yeah, the story's nothing to write home about. But, you know, it's it's good. And, you know, I have talked about it last week, but Bo is featured even more as a character. Because yeah. you got to... Del- in a repeatable quest, you got to deliver Bo's burgers. People love burgers! Yeah, they want Bo's burgers. Um, yep. I'm almost a little bit like maybe it is relating to the Bush Burger story of some kind. I'm like, I, I'm starting to think people on the Borderlands. I feel almost bad not having played it because I'm starting to feel like there's nothing directly saying like, oh, aha, this is me they're referencing. Hmm. But the Burger Bow connection is strong. Unfortunately, Bow doesn't have any art. They didn't bother to draw me. Hmm. Or have an avatar. He sits behind a door and he just delivers damn burgers. And I was like, you know, if I could just get a visual on, I don't know. I just feel like maybe it hits close to home. Not many characters in movies and media are named Bo, except for stupid Wackwood Phoenix and his. <laughs> Wack- it's all going to change, Bo. It's all going to change. Wackwood, how do you say him? Joaquin. Joaquin is his name, but I like Wackwood. Wack- 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 I like Wackham. Wackham Phoenix is pretty good. <laughs> Wackwood Phoenix. So hold on a second. Uh, you, um, So you think that Wizards took Chicken Lord, and now these guys are doing Bush Burger. Or oh, they Bo didn't. Burger. Okay, so hang on. Yeah. Yes, I think that about the Chicken <laughs> Lord. But um, no, That's they didn't when take Bo any... started this whole OGL issue. It was they like, didn't literally they didn't... <laughs> cited him as the cause. Yeah, they didn't take anything from me. I feel this is an homage. Yeah. I don't feel any. I don't feel any. If this was confirmed as the case, I would just feel flattered because Borderlands Two is among my favorite games. Right, and it's kind of cool if the the kind of acknowledgement was there, even. You know, I have a you know we have a Justin Roiland problem with that drive at medieval times. Like it, that's always it. There's, a, there's a little nugget of that in the back of my mind as I play the game, and I'm like, should yeah. I play this game? Yeah. But um, I really like Borderlands Three a lot. Borderlands and, you know. is a cool series. I hope there's more in the future, and I know that Tiny Teen is a thing I should probably play too, but I haven't got around to it. You still yeah, have, I mean, it's, right? it's just if you're in the mood. I've been in the mood because Diablo 4 is not out yet for a flavor. Like, Grim Dawn was okay. I think I said all this last week. Like, I've been playing ARPGs. None of them are doing it, and this is just... It's doing it. It's just doing it, yeah. And the builds are interesting. By the way, we almost have a... It's not quite there yet, but Crofton played Zane Flint, who's the roguish guy in this. Yeah. And he has got a killer Irish... I didn't know he was Irish. Ooh. He, and he's saying it like, so the last encounter I was in, it was 20 to 1. Bad news for them. You know, implying that his 1 is better than their 20. And sure. it, it, just the voice actor is like, I should have been playing that character the whole time. I played the stupid siren or the, the dog <laughs> guy, the robot with the dog. Although oh, I like, I like, I like the like robot Flack. with the god dog. I like Flax. Flax actually pretty cool. Yeah, he's but cool. Uh, I think the real winner is Zane with his. I, I didn't know the Irish accent just made me go, oh, it, like the voice actor who does it is stellar. Yeah. So, since it's Crofton, does he go? Hey, I pickpocketed the entire town and then set the place on fire. Does he do no, like that? he doesn't have that. He doesn't sound that. It's more cool and, <laughs> oh, okay. and rusty. Like, but it is It is like that minus the hey, Jesus, <laughs> Mary, and Joseph. <laughs> You know, it's not, he's more like, I'm going to kill you all. And he has like those made up, like eight British Irish words. You're just like, yeah. what did he say? He's like the flimmy, f- the flimmy flammies in the, the thing. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Acknowledged. I just watched uh, cool. Banshees of Inishira 
and the Sheeran, I think is how you say it, with uh, Colin Farrell and uh, the other guy, uh, Brendan Gleeson, and they do that all the time. It's set in the 20s, and it uses all these crazy Irish sayings I've never heard before, and I yeah. freaking love that yeah. movie, by the way. Isn't that great. the same pairing from In Bruges? Yeah, same director and writer, too. So they're all Oh, together. really? Yeah. just got them back? John, you got to see it. I'm... It's great. It's real good. I love In Bruges, so I will yeah, watch it, that. Yeah, it does channel some In Bruges. Like, he's a bounty hunter. Like, he, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's tough guy Irish. It's, it's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, anyway, I really... There you go. I really fell in love. I felt a lot, lot to fall in love with, and, of course, the package is much slicker than two. So. Borderlands 3, everybody. Yeah. All right, that brings us to our break. When we come back, uh, we're going to do a Dear Martha, and then we're going to tear through... Some additional news, some emails, and a phone call today. Uh, we'll make them all pretty quick because there's a bunch of them. But uh, anyway, that's all coming up right after this, so stay tuned. Picking at their phone to snap photos of it. No, but look how happy you are. He's grinning the whole way down. It's great. That's what yeah. you want. Um, I like right. I choose to remember it as a happy time instead of one filled with anxiety <laughs> that someone was going to find me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely the best meme the show's ever experienced. Um, so. Yeah, so. you know, I... I was showing someone and I hadn't realized so many people had commented on it. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. It's big. Who do, who do, yeah. yeah. It's it big. Is. All right. John's back. We're all it's back. A... Let's see here. I'm back. Yes, you are. And we're back. It's time to do Dear Martha. And it's a fun little thing we do. John takes these old, ancient video game magazines, some newer, some older, but you know, it just depends on the day. And uh, does a rad thing around it, and we always love it. Uh, John, let's get our Ken Burns on and go for it. Anything special here before we start? Nope, just a regular Dear Martha. Here we go. Let it begin. My dearest Martha, I write to you today with truly troubling news. My hope was to write a review of the Canadian video game magazine Total oh. Gamer from July 2002. Just look at this magazine, Martha. Like most things Canadian, it looks like us. It sounds mostly like us. By all accounts, it would be a magazine from right here in the States, were it not for this .ca business on the web address and the maple leaf on the cover. I had even practiced a fun and slightly offensive Canadian accent for the whole ordeal sounding somewhere between Rick Moranis and Strange Brew, and any character in the TV show Fargo, which, yes, is in North Dakota, but I'm not great with accents. <laughs> anyway, despite this fantastic concept and literal minutes of planning, I have found myself stuck in this time-space limbo, unable to reach the needed time and space to do the review I hoped for. It's all basically the time traveler equivalent of if the website where you got your magazines from had an issue with its downloads. It would be almost exactly like that. I'd love to do the silly voice and talk about Blinks the Time Sweeper, a mascot uh, that got slapped on everything for a while before yeah. going absolutely nowhere. Or their best of E3, which, if the cover is to be believed, is Sly Cooper and Mario Sunshine. Two games much better than Blinks the Time Sweeper. <laughs> the cover also promised Canadian gaming news. And I just really wanted to know what all that was about. <laughs> it's a damn shame, Martha. Hopefully this limbo gets sorted out and I can find something of substance next week. However, in the true spirit of Canada, I leave you with this. Sorry. Yours in time limbo. S. Beckett. Who knows? Uh, you had me with the aboot. I knew that was coming. I just didn't know where. Just a, a matter of time. blast from the past, eh? Yeah, eh? It's pretty good. <laughs> hey. How do you feel about that, Bo, as a Canadian? Do you feel represented? I feel embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's I mean, awesome. You rightly pointed out the need for Canadian things to be like. By the way, this is a Canadian thing. Yep, we always. It's about point games, it out. nothing to do with Canada. But here's a maple leaf. I had a guy today on Twitter, and he'll have to and correct. Canadian me from... gaming news. Yeah. What news? Yeah. What does that even mean? Exactly. Like, I understand I we have studios. 
How to like, guy on Twitter just about Ubisoft? Like, yeah, it's all it's yeah. all those French studios. Here's the thing: I get this I get this text or this Twitter from some dude on Twitter today, and he was saying how I'm too. Basically, it boiled down that I'm too easy on Canada and that Canada's going like full fascist up there. And I didn't understand what he was talking about because I was always like, "Ah, oh, we got our problems down here," but boy, Canadians are great. And I'm still not oh, quite boy. sure. Are you guys experiencing some kind of weird uh, upswing and weirdness or something? Or no, this is someone listening to someone like uh, Schmo Schmorgan or Schmorgan Sh- Schmiederson. <laughs> <laughs> Those who shall not be named for fear of just shitty e- e- emails. I well, I had a really good back and forth but... with the guy. It was it was a good sort of thing, but I don't understand the Canadian bit. Like I didn't. I so get it. okay, it's Canada is has been long used as a conservative United States talking point uh, because. We do things like give a shit about each other, and <laughs> novel ideas, weird, strange and concepts. Weird. We don't you know, understand. Down we down. have no shortage of people who complain up here. So you pick and you cherry pick uh, your complaints and then use it to win your own argument because they see they're like us, and it's like worse, you know. But it's it's not fascist here. Like it, it just depends. So the one thing I can say that you stand always stand in, I think the world stands in admiration of an America is the fact that you will stand for your position and you will speak out. And, you know, there's going to come a time probably soon where that's going to be something that, you know, America's going to have to show all over again. You have a long history of civil rights activism and you know, unions, things like that. Like that's, that's important, and that spirit's important, mm-hmm. even if it causes a lot of problems and arguments and just difficulty. Sure. Um, and and here we're 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 just less. We don't have that same. That's a big cultural difference between us, right? It's like, oh, just be polite and get along. But like, someone else paved the way for us to get here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we're like, mm-hmm. yeah, because we still like. We we're still part of the Commonwealth, <laughs> like we're still a, a British uh, not colony, but um, you know, our, we have a Governor General who's the representative of now the King in the country. It's mm-hmm. ceremonial, but if it's ceremonial, why do we even have it? Who knows? Let's just keep trucking on because everyone's just fine. So Trudeau is not, not about to line people up and shoot them or anything like that. No, people don't want to say different pronouns. Well, it's just the it's the it's transphobic agenda. So it's just bullcrap. Itself. Yes, like it's great. Yes, the the government uh, tells us what to do sometimes. Like they tell us not to jaywalk. They, they gover- governments in every democracy tell people what to do, and the spirit is supposed to be that it's just to help each other live peacefully and in a community. Right. And if you disagree, maybe you'll say salacious shit like that. But yeah, yeah. It's, All right. I, I've never felt. I, don't, I guess one way to put it is that my grandparents fled from communist-run Russia to come to Canada, and they were very happy. They were thrilled. <laughs> and not much has cha- and not much has changed in my mother's lifetime sure. uh, in that way. So yeah, get get some perspective, people. There you go. Uh, let us now move on to what are we doing next? Oh, other news of note. Some quick stuff. Some of this is a little rough but ubisoft's having a rough time as we know we talked about it last week a little bit but now we've got some additional stuff uh during the past week the ceo blamed devs for the company's failings which is the thing you probably don't want to do from the top and they're all pretty pissed so the devs are uh, staged to walk out uh so that worked out well and then the ceo apologized and so i'm sure all is perfectly well now at ubisoft (laughs) It was one of those half-hearted, like, I'm sorry you misunderstood me apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when I said it was, so what he said was the balls in your court to the developers when he was talking about how their financial hardships had occurred. And then mm-hmm. he goes, developers, the balls in your court. They kind of naturally took that to mean as nothing I can do as the CEO of this company. You guys are going to have to pull us out of the water. Didn't like it. And then he went... No, I didn't mean that. I meant like we're all in this together. Yeah. When I, when I say the ball's in your court, I mean it's in our court. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> he should have said that in the first freaking place. You know, that's a lame. That's lame. I'm. I'm. You know what? I, I would have staged to walk. I would have been mad if I were them. Because they're the one. They don't get to cancel their own pro- projects. By the way, all these delays and cancellations they come from the top. So they've got entire teams that have devoted the last two three years of their life to unannounced projects. 
cranking away, heads down, going for it, only to hear from the top, yeah, we're canceling that. And then to turn around and go, well, ball's in your court. F off, you chodes. That's lame. I don't like that at all. We got a text about it. You want to hear this? Look at this. This guy says, uh, after listening to the Ubisoft segment last week, I was surprised, uh, th- sorry, that Far Cry 6 was never mentioned. 6 came out only in 2021 and uh, just had a DLC expansion released for it in the second part of 2022. This is from Shanna Fan who sent that in. Um, yeah. They it did, but... It doesn't change literally anything we said, except we could have said, oh, also Far Cry 6 came out. Yeah, and also another Far Cry. I mean, kind of... They haven't changed much over the last three versions. It did well, but it didn't change the fact that Ubisoft was like all of our games underperformed. So now we're just putting another game on the it underperformed pile. Right. So their sequel to Phoenix, uh, the new Phoenix uh, Rising or whatever, is going to feature Giancarlo Esposito as the main character. Just kidding. That's not happening. (laughs) That would be so good. Uh, Let's move on to this Microsoft thing. Oh yeah, I know you want to move on. I just. No, go ahead. Did he really? I, I just because I'm late to the story, so I'm just. Gimo told the workers the balls in your court. Yeah. Yes. To 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 succeed, like I'll tell everyone we're going to succeed, and the balls in your court, whether you have jobs or not. Yep. In a Ye- Yevo company Gilamont. wide email to thousands of employees. Yep. Yep. Okay. And it was I poorly just to deceived. be clear that this really happened. <laughs> yes, that's pretty much. And what then he's like backpedaling. I didn't. I didn't mean it that. Like, come on. Here's what. This is what the full quote is. See, this is worse than you think. He says, "Quote, I will not do it in Yves Guillemont's voice. I'm not saying his name <laughs> I was right." Was waiting either. for it. I was like, <laughs> but you got to say that before you say quote because now people think he said that. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't say that part. He said, "The ball is now in our court." For years, it has been in your court. So why did you mishandle the ball so badly? We, the workers, have to fix it. Oh, this is from a person. That's not his quote. That's what a worker wrote back to him. No, you're right. I'm trying to find the original quote. It's up a little bit. It's it's two paragraphs up. The ball is in your court to deliver this lineup on On time. time The expected level of quality and show everyone what we are capable of achieving. Yeah, see, that's just condescending and shitty. And I don't the on time part. Like I don't the know. balls in your it's not about even delivering quality. It's like you guys are missing deadlines. Like that's that you read that if someone sends that to you and you're like, oh, I, I they must feel I'm missing deadlines. Like it's just gross. I don't how like do you? It. Yeah, like, how, like we're all every every one of the companies messing up except for me, and I'm the leader of this thing, and I got to go and publicly be humiliated. So fix it, you yeah, schmucks. And now he has to tell him, sorry, I didn't mean it that way, even though he totally meant it that way. Yeah, I mean, you can't. can't. There's only one way to say the balls in your court, and it's not. <laughs> It's, it always means that it's not in yours. Yeah. It's in somebody else's. Yeah, no, the literal meaning of the use of the idiom, the ball is in your court, means you're in charge of it. You have the ball. Now it's up to you. And if you it don't score, we're screwed. Your responsibility. You. Yeah, 100% on you. you. Nobody else can do anything because yes. you have there's, the ball and the timer's counting down. And there's no way he just learned that or is like, I never used it and didn't entirely know what it meant. It's like... The most boomer ass saying of 2023 is the ball is in your court. Yeah, I don't like it. You you know you're white when you say the ball is in your court. Well, forget uh, that he yeah. smeared poo all over the ball before it got to the other end of the court. Like that's my whole point. Is like when they had yeah. the ball, what did they do? Because it's in their court now, but it was in your court. So yeah. a quit using the idiom, Yves Guillemont, and do something else. I hate it. Maybe he needs to. Uh, he needs to maybe. I don't know. The rest of the founders retire, all step down. Away. He could retire. <laughs> like, get somebody in there who knows what they're doing. I don't know. I'm getting so sick of these gaming CEOs, man. It's, none of them look good anymore. I'm telling you. No. I well, know. I mean, this is kind of breaking news. Uh, I'll, it's not really news, but in our modern society where Twitter posts are news, um, Brian Halinka from World of Warcraft. Oh shit. Uh, tweeted out. I know this will sound like vague tweeting, but man, I re- I didn't really think I would be a strong advocate for unions in the game industry until working at Blizzard over the past two to three years. I really love the people I work with and my immediate bosses, but beyond that, zero trust. Whoa, Brian. Okay, friend of the show, by the way. Brian yeah, Malenka. I got to shake his hand and meet him. But nice yeah, guy. he's an he's one of the nicest dudes I ever met up there. Always yeah, been really kind great. to us. Wonderful dude. Lots of I had a bunch of conversations about him and his kids. He's just the sweetest guy. 
That's yeah. hardcore coming out of him. He doesn't talk like that. Yeah, that's a tweet of note. That's a yeah, tweet he, he, worth he, reporting on. You know, like he that. followed up. Yeah. I am the grandson of a small businessman. Most of my family in the area where I grew up learned uh, leaned politically right. Unions being bad was sort of ingrained in me, but just over and over and over again, it feels like our collective will is being tested. Yeah. I mean, this is the story. It's. I'm glad you brought this up because we're talking about Ubisoft. This is a Blizzard thing. We've got that dynamic with Wizards and the people who make the game versus the people who run it. There is like a real squeeze happening in the gaming industry overall with trying to create fun and excellent products and trying to maintain, as Scott, you pointed out, like a scale problem. Mm -hmm. Where it's like for these businesses to operate and be successful, they got to juice. They got to wring that orange dry until there's nothing but rind and they have all kinds of creepy ways of getting there. And I, Brian's yeah. saying that zero trust means that exactly. That. That's what like, that means. I, you, yeah. I'm a game designer. Here's what's good for the health of the game. And the response would be like, yeah, but we're going to do this anyway. Yeah. You know, this is the way we have to go. And I, and I, you know, like smaller indie uh, developers that are very successful to say big giant or huge giant game, big giant games, big, huge giant games. What are they called? They make Hades. <laughs> Super, super giant, giant, super games. giant games. I wasn't sure if you were talking about a classic game. indie big giant, giant small big giant. Uh, I couldn't indie, think giant, of it. Small games. But those guys, indie, huge big giant games, huge giant big those, games. Those guys, I have a ton giant. of respect for them because they're they're both big and small, right? They they remain tight and lean, but they yeah. are having un, amazing success in the past. Or maybe others would see that success and go, "Well, now we're going to sell ourselves and be billionaires. Let's go." They don't they seem still to be experience doing that. limits. Like you don't get some games the scope of triple a's you know right without that scale uh, but you're right me, yeah this makes you me know, worry like, i really like brian he's a cool-headed dude and that makes me think and when he says that it makes me worry well and we are seeing and i don't know what it's in relation to because obviously he probably can't go into it but recently activision blizzard has been trying to bust unions you know unions have been a thing that's been trying to pop up in activision blizzard for a while now every time it does they use union busting techniques to try and keep it from happening so it could be about that it could be about something else altogether we don't really know yeah. but i i think to the point that Bo was saying and and where we're kind of at like you're just seeing this break on this trust between the higher up business people and the people that are actually doing the work yeah well, and it's hard this week not to notice that across the board. There's a, a whole wave of these layoffs. And people aren't talking about it because we're in the game space and we're not really thinking about it in the same terms. But this is kind of a bigger, broader problem. Amazon is laying off 18,000 people. Our next news story is about Microsoft. Microsoft's doing about eight. Well, no, it's not quite that. No, they're doing 10,000. 10,000. They laid they did, off 10,000. They laid down. It's, it's their second largest. Their largest was 18,000 back in 2000 and nine or ten or something when they dumped all that nokia stuff pandemic's um, over <laughs> yeah so there's a lot of there's a lot of that going on right now across the whole tech space facebook uh, facebook and their specifically their vr department dumped a ton of people like it's just uh, all over the place twitter of mm -hmm. course and um so there's a bit of re not recession but a pulling back by tech companies games are not immune to this yet somehow prices on everything went up anyway um, which well, I mean, that's what it is. It isn't we're losing money. We got to downsize. It's we project less profit. So, how do we tell a story next year about how we were profitable? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's, it's not a secret anymore. It's never like, ending growth. Even yeah, though I hate it's it. not true. Hate In the it. moment, there's a PR release saying like, "Oh, in order to remain profitable, we'll do this." But the real story is over and over again. We look good this year. How do we look good next year? Yeah, uh, there. That's the path. That's like, how that's you all, do it. So if sales are lower. If your sales projections are lower next year, then you look better because you have less overhead because you fired yeah. everybody the year before. Yeah. Yeah. You've increased the value of your company because the projections look healthier. You know, you are squeezing out revenue like 10,000 people. That's a lot of money. And I try not to get and like. It's also while they're sitting there with billions of dollars invested in making a merger happen, which. <laughs> It's your company. You have the right to, you know, manage that company and do what you need to do. I'm not trying to say you can't try and grow a company and downsize at the same time, but it sure looks bad 
when you are putting out the biggest attempted buyout of a company in the history of anything and you're going yeah. oh we can't we can't keep these 10,000 people in jobs can't yeah be. yeah it's it's defies lot it defies logic and it feels like the explanations are getting more and more insane as to rationalize like in PRs to a point where it's like we're gaslit into you know, you'll say something like this and you'll get a tweet or a response or, well, that's just business. That's how business, you know, you'll get people who'll just accept what well, clearly on the face of it is stupid. And, and yeah, I, it's also the real estate savings too. I, I think always in these stories, we talk about um, salaries, you know, it's saving a lot of money, but mm -hmm. facilities will close down. And mm -hmm. Real estate being very expensive, that'll also it's it's even more money that they're saving than that um just yeah to i try not to yeah, i try not to blurt this out all the time lately because i'm so annoyed by it but they're the usual indicators of inf of inflation are almost always there during inflationary times almost always there's like these two or three economic factors you can point to and say yep those are in play therefore inflation none of those are in play all of it is inflated by Maybe, I don't want to just straight up say greed, but it's all just, well, we're going to increase prices because everybody's excited about this thing, or we're going to have artificial mm -hmm. scarcity going on with this other thing or, or whatever. All of it is generated at the corporate level at the moment, and none mm -hmm. of the normal factors are at play. Irritates the living shit out of me. I mean, there's literally, there's literally shit pouring out of me right now from it. Yeah. That's how you're attacking and, Go and get well, in the lake. You, you leave that shit to go on a toilet. You won't have a toilet if you can't afford rent, which is also a common complaint. I mean rent is always going to be a common complaint but like it has the stuff they pay in silicon valley and in certain places in the world for rent yeah and for people to have the privilege of working in the gaming space and have no hope for a future like it's you're getting squeezed both ways right like salaries are low rents are going everyone the way to get rich in, a, in their capitalist country right now i know lots of people who do this buy a house pay off the mortgage with the rent it's not some secret plan. It's like tons of people do this and that's also hurting things. I mean, I'm not an economist. I just, I feel it. I see a lot of people doing it and my kids can't, my kids are all young adults now. They can't afford shit. They can't afford no, anything. No. They're all working their asses off to try to figure out what they're going to do. A starter home at, at these days, like when Kim and I got married, we could maybe swing something around 90 grand. It wouldn't be the best place ever. That still seemed high then, but we were just like, well, we'll figure it out. And you just figure it out. The kids now they're staring down the barrel of like $600,000 base entry home prices. Yes. That, that's yeah. not livable. It's, it's insane. It can't be done. And, and job pay increases like your annual salary increases. The last job I had, which was a good job, the increase for a like highly rated promotion was the same as the price increase um it's not exactly the same but it kind of amounts to it once you factor in all the hours it's what i was getting when i made minimum wage years prior yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous it's like inflation has moved up so high and employers are not rising to match it they're like well it's a new year you're gonna get a brand new quarter uh, <laughs> for, uh, per hour when what you were getting whoa. before whoa Slow it's down. like that ain't gonna pay the rent increase my rent went up 75 percent, so yeah. that ain't gonna cut it no it's all screwed there, there needs to be oh. a reset something needs to happen i don't know what it is but it needs oh. to happen before everyone loses everything it's bad i don't know but the you know the gaming space being what it is i just hear that complaint a lot from people who are also in there about having to live yeah. like you know live in irvine uh, i heard that a lot it's just it's very expensive to begin with you know? yeah living there's impossible and they're paying you the least amount they have to because blizzard because working at blizzard was such a you do anything to be there so you would take a massive hit on potential pay just to work there and then maybe you'll get lucky enough to work your way up but what about right now? Like, what are you doing now? Like, yeah, Blizzard is a, it's not sustainable. a notorious prestige hire. Like, we right. will get you in at this rate, and it is because you get to put "I worked at Blizzard" on your resume. Yeah, you get to put your feet on our holy ground, and then that's what they said about McDonald's when I was eighteen. <laughs> really? You know, yeah. I, if ironically, you work at McDonald's is good on a resume. I, ironically, McDonald's lying, actually McDonald's pays better than anybody right now. They have like. 
better than the minimum wage by far. I think it's like a minimum. They do minimum of 15 or whatever. They have mandatory um, health insurance. Uh, they don't skimp on any of that stuff. And they do school, some kind of school joint thing where they'll they'll match pay on schooling or something. Like they're Things actually like the, the Things place. have changed back in my day when I, I worked at McDonald's. I, I'm a McDonald's alum. Uh, was the was the, the ice cream machine ever machine. truly broken, or is that always made up? I don't know. It works. Okay. It wasn't made up. It just, <laughs> just, nobody knows how to fix the damn thing that works there. I mean, if something breaks, you know. Because I swear every time I, just, I, I go. I think it's the most fiddly of all the devices, you know. The yeah. heating metal peats. Yeah. <laughs> you can cook burgers on it. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. The, but, cook, uh, the cooking metal heats. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's literally just a piece of metal that's really hot. Yeah. And there's two grease troughs on the side. Like, yep. that's all, it's nothing fancy. Slap some meat on there, heat it up, put Actually, it in a bag. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Anyways, the, yeah, a long time ago. But, um, yeah, no, they said that about McDonald's, so, you know. That's wow. true. <clears throat> Man, the thing I hated most about McDonald's is smelling like Big Mac at the end of eight-hour shift. Even after just, showers, like, I, when yeah, I worked at Chi Chi's, it still smelled like it, yeah. That's you bad. put your clothes on the next day, even after washing it, the faint scent of Big Mac wafting in your nose. It's a good time to have a dog, though, right? Because the dog loves you. It's supposed to be around you, sniffing <laughs> That's you. That's true. Yeah, they love you when you're like that. Uh, 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 I, um, I, yeah. I'm surprised, uh, for humanity reasons, we haven't shut down fast food restaurants. Not for the food quality, but just, it's kind of inhumane to make people work there. Like, if you're a kid, maybe. But if you're like over 25 and you work at, and this isn't shade, you got to work somewhere. So I'm not judging. But it feels like an injustice. You know what I mean? When I see people that work in their 40s at McDonald's, I'm like, you smell like Big Mac every day. It's like it's cruelty. <laughs> I was it's thinking cruelty. it was more like, like a, a socio-economic reason, but your whole thing is you smell like a burger the whole day. That's gross. Yeah, <laughs> like that's you know that's my life smelling like Big Mac until I retire. Like mm. just don't do you know we still got a lot of work to do if we're trying to take care of each other. Sure. And uh, yeah, suck it, McDonald's. Suck it. You uh, guys made me so hungry for McDonald's. I know it kind of sounds good. <laughs> I won't lie. I want a Big Mac now. Nice My job. wife took the kids. She brought me a Coke. I appreciate it. Oh, but I didn't get any burgers. That's too bad. Well, you got you got the you got the most filling part of your meal, so you'll be you'll, you'll be all <laughs> yeah, set. Good. I got the uh, part no, that if, I you're, get if you're if you're a nurse, like I get some jobs will smell. Someone said beat smelling like a geriatric fart, and it made me think like, <laughs> you know, if you're a nurse in an old age home, you are doing a good service, and it's maybe it's probably inhumane too. Uh, it's inhumane too. I, I don't. I worked at PetSmart take... at the dog hotel, and let me tell you, when I got home, it was a direct walk to the shower, and my clothes needed to be washed every single night. And on top of that, here's the thing. PetSmart gives you one vest. It's mandatory you wear the stupid vest, but they only give you one. Mm. And I said, hey, considering I have dog shit on me every day after work, do you think maybe I can get a second vest so I don't have to wash this thing literally every night? Yeah. Nope. Nope. We can't do that. That's too much. How dare you ask for such a thing? Yeah. Wow. But what a hard... Uh, you know what? This is. I have an audio clip of how you smelled at the end of the day. You ready? Here it is. Yep. Wait for it. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can generous. smell the audio from yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> smell the audio. Yeah, anyway, we started going. to derail it into McDonald's talk. Oh, well, let's um, move on to Mac Microsoft podcast. then, because they laid off 10,000 employees. We talked about that. There are some of the gaming jobs, but it's kind of across the board for Microsoft. There's a whole bunch of whole bunch of stuff. This comes from the top. Uh, well, Sachin Adele is the one telling everybody, so I assume it comes from the top. Um, there. Oh, uh, Halo lost their main... Uh, their Halo Infinite show game runner went back to Microsoft Publishing where he came from. <laughs> I don't mean like go back to there where you came. I don't mean like that. But like he decided I'm going to step down and go back to my job I had at Microsoft before this. People are all upset thinking he was the life force of all things Halo. And I think a lot probably, of Halo people got fired too. And they they yeah. they were not shy. They said, "Hey, this game didn't perform well because of incompetence." Yeah. So, you know, you guys are firing us. But you really only have yourselves to blame. Yeah, they're pretty pissed. Uh, yeah, they'll so they'll cry in their millions of dollars, I'm sure. Well, some of them. Yeah. Um, also, the Sorry. FBI recommends internet users use ad blockers. That's pretty cool. I just <laughs> thought this was funny. It was on PC Gamer. <laughs> it's not really gaming related, but I'm like, 
Yeah, that makes sense, actually. It's just weird because I think if you're Google, you're like, wait, you're recommending they steal from us? You know, we mm-hmm. show ads for a reason. Mm-hmm. And the FBI is like, yep, it's not safe out there on your website. Like, I was like, oh, this is like tangential. It's like a little shade. Th- second degree shade or yeah. whatever, you know? Like, they need like, to yeah. add that to all the news sites we go to to get ready for this show where it says, do you want to disable ad blocker? There needs to be a, the FBI said I shouldn't. But yeah, that button, it should push. say yes, no, or FBI said I shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> like, that's like your government coming out and saying we don't like they, they recommend what you do eat, but they don't actually come out and say, don't eat at McDonald's. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's yeah. like, it was, it's like, to me, it's the same level. It's like use protection when using Google Bing or DuckDuckGo, yeah. or whatever sites you go to. And they don't specify the company, but still next they're going to be telling us the safest way to get, uh, the last of us is to download it off the pirate bay. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's the that's the next logical step here, and I'm like I'm kind of. Well, then you worry about fishing like because sometimes they're fishing. Sometimes it's the FBI going, "Hey, I'm a cute girl that's that's underage. What are you what are you doing? Like, why is this your? I don't know why, <laughs> but like you hear about this all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> darn FBI always pretending to be a cute girl. There was one. They were showing some example on Twitter where an account Wait, was that? some girl with a gun and she was all camoed up, and they were going after a certain demographic. And then they found out later it was actually a dude with a girl's face photoshopped. And as soon as someone accused him of being the FBI, the account went away. And so it's a little suspicious, but they do a little bit of that. It's a little bit of like, you know, stings like stuff. Okay. So I'm not saying that, that that's what this is. I'm just saying, you know, I don't know that the FBI has always got my best interest at heart. Although I'm not talking to no girls. That's not what I'm saying. Everybody at uh, home. I yeah, just realized like boy. deep fate. Yeah, anyways, this is a different topic. It's a different show, to really. Like. What it is. Deep fake technology coming out. Someone might be able to pretend there's someone you're not. You give them their information. You know. Well, pretty soon you doesn't can be. To, uh, oh, yeah. go ahead. What are you gonna say? It doesn't have to be that scenario in particular. But let's say an of a legally of age woman enticing a man, for example. But it's really another man, just yeah. with a voice change. Yeah. Fake on. It's just so a dude. Your FBI. bank account, baby, and we'll have a good time. You're yeah. like, yep, sure. Two, yep. four, seven, eight, nine, two, seven, eight. Next thing so you know, in Chris summary, Anderson. the FBI says you should use an ad blocker, but we don't know if we trust them because sometimes they pretend to be a girl. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Glad we covered it. Glad we got it all. Uh, the hard-hitting news uh, room of CORE really came through today. If you, if you like this, let us know. We'll start a second podcast called <laughs> FBI News. <laughs> yep. Let's do it. Cool. FBI in. I like it. Uh, modders have voiced the entirety of Final Fantasy VII, the original game. It's a mod. You can play it on your PC. So I just thing. thought it was cool. It's PSA, awesome. You know, it seems um, it seems a little like amateurish, but the voice acting is not too bad that I saw in the video. Let's I thought see. John would be interested in this if he didn't already. Let know. me find a little bit I, of it. I, yeah, I did the whole game for oh, free. Cloud, oh. your face, it's pitch black. Sit your ass in the chair and drink your goddamn tea. Jeez. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So That's one cool. of the features is that they did, they don't literally read it. They retranslated the Japanese. So the localization made a bit more sense. Oh, that's good. It did uh, need that. As a result, absolutely the, yeah. as a result, they ended up saying the word shit a lot in it, and they had they sort of issued an apology because the trailer had the word shit like five times in it, and people were commenting like, "Why is there so much swearing in this? They don't remember it." It's yeah. like, oh, it's because they they retranslated it, so there's some artistic license I think in their translation. It'd be great if Cloud just spent all his time saying he's going to kill chaos, and that turns out to be the original intent <laughs> the whole the time. Yeah. And we're like, oh, I oh, now I understand, weirdos. Uh, then finally, uh, don't I don't know. Play high on life if you want, or don't. Justin Roiland's in big trouble though, and people had receipts right away. It's not like this is all. Kind of talked about it. I don't know that we need to get into the weeds on this. this we're not a. Here's what I want, and I've, others have said this. I agree with it. Here's the thing: when he goes into court, he should be required by law to do everything he says should be in the Morty voice, all of it. So when they say. Uh, Mr. Royland, do you understand the charges against you? Uh, I don't know about this one on page three. Like I want, he has to be able to talk like that the whole time. That should be the law. I feel like someone. Now that you put it out there, someone's going to dramatize it on the YouTube, like, <laughs> right? Like anybody could do this, right? Yeah. yeah, I hope someone's going to do it. Someone's got. There's a lot of seasons of Rick and Morty to pull from. They're going to do it whether he does it or not. Yeah, I, I just I feel it's important to mention. You know, we had a real. You know big issue with blizzard and it's like it's not getting to the drama of it all but it's just it's a recurring theme 
yeah over and over again in this space and i don't know what to do about it i don't have any deep thoughts about it except i'm sick of seeing this over and over again from shit i i like yeah i don't and, like it at yeah. all it pisses me off yeah. you know i, what I, I don't re- believe in telling people what they can and can't play but it's a thing that happened and you should play uh with your conscience yeah go, go take your conscience out and play with it and see how it feels and if it says don't play high on life maybe don't play high on right life. and if you were playing it on game pass now we know that chained echoes is on game game pass switch gears and play that because that game's cool man all right, let's get to these texts and emails here. Oh, check it out. That's here, a good here we go. question. Here's uh, we got some calls actually. So people left voicemails at eight zero one four seven one zero four six two, and we got one about the apology at Wizards, and I thought this would be a good way to kind of follow that up. So check it out. Hey, Core Show. I'm guessing at this point you guys have already talked about Kyle Brink's uh, apology uh, that that they put out on D and D Beyond, and and again, obviously there's a bunch that we need to wait and see but i get the feeling that from the dnd community that that nobody's going to be open and willing to forgive these guys do you guys if, if they can come out with some reasonable things in the new ogl do you think this is something that they can salvage or, or are they just too gone um love love all three of you guys give it a group <laughs> give it a group <laughs> give it a group uh boy that's an old that's an old yeah. callback i <laughs> yeah. like it that felt that felt good to hear that did feel good that gave me dopamine um so here's the deal uh bo i'll throw this mostly to you i think today because i know you follow this really closely but there's some late breaking news on this as of tonight they they have issued a statement that they're going for an unrevocable uh, Creative Commons license. I don't know why I'm holding this Bart doll while I talk. <laughs> like, why is Bart <laughs> why, is, why is he crotch is first? bouncing in front of the the camera? Yeah, that was weird. I'll illustrate I my that. point. Let me show you. I don't you know why box. I did that. It was just in my hand. Um, but anyway, I mean, it's fine. Like, I'm playing with a little Allen wrench, so sure. I get it. You you sure. fiddle with things. But a little more. All of bright. a sudden, Bart Simpson's legs came into view right in front of the camera. I was like, what are we doing? Yeah, and I didn't warn anybody. But anyway, so the this. Creative Commons thing in on the face of it seems like a good move because this is them saying, "Hey, we're going to make it so it's shareable and it's you know these certain conditions or whatever." There's also still a lot of little tiny text, and there's a, a bunch of other hot takes. I agree with him that the temperature in the room right now is nobody wants to trust or forgive him. But, but where do you stand on it as of now since we last talked? I mean, the damage is done. Like I don't think it's changed from last week. The trust issues are there. They could reverse everything today. And people would still be asking, when are they going to try it? Mm. Mm. You know, it, the only way that they can salvage this is to be honest, which they're not doing. Mm. <laughs> and, and I don't expect them to do. Yeah. You know, Activision wasn't transparent about its problems. Other people, I'm just not going to go through the whole list, but lots of other people are not transparent or fully in the apologies. Um, the one actually I sort of revisited this week watching a reactor's video was Dan Harmon's apology for... His treatment of someone, which was actually a good apology and very rare. Is that the one from years ago? It was good as ago? an example. That was a years ago one, right? That was a while ago, yeah. yeah. But but it, it still good, stands though. out yeah. as actually a thoughtful, like you, it was long. I mean, he's used to it because he did a podcast and played D&D in front of people. He's used to being in front of people and, and talking, but he it's very honest yeah. well, to the fullest that. extent about his mistakes. And, you know, very publicly, you know, he was forgiven by the person, you know, he would do you think he's wrong? By how do you think he is with the Royland stuff? Wrong. Since he worked with Justin Royland on Rick and Morty, you feel I, like there's something weird there. I don't know. You don't know people, right? Like that. Like the thing is, like people's like you know bedroom stuff kind of stays private. Like yeah. we've known each other for ten years. I don't know if you like to get choked at you know in private. Like I don't know. I'm not going to ask. I, Scott, I don't care. I'm safe to say he doesn't base on that. Do yeah. or he's but a I don't very know. good actor. Maybe maybe you got a thing for shoes or so like i don't know i don't care and i would respect you either way for the most part unless it's pedo shit basically yeah, and it's they... like and time and time again <laughs> why so so like please men just chill the fuck out like <laughs> stop it like yeah. i don't know how to make it stop but like just don't make cool shit so i don't love your shit then find out you know this stuff later because I'm not going to ask. I don't want to know. But once I know, I can't unknow. And and these these mistreatments of people are coming home to roost. And um, very publicly for some people. I think when it comes to 
I don't know how we got into this because it doesn't really relate to the OGL at all. No, nope. but I think being <laughs> so honest, in other words, wizard yeah. needs to be nicer in the bedroom. That's what we're well, saying. it's a trust issue. I think at this point, there are a lot of people who are very smart and very passionate about this hobby, and because they opened the door, everyone's like, "You can't copyright rules, right? Like, you want to have this conversation? You own nothing. Yeah. You own nothing." Good going, you guys. You want to have this argument, like um, Kyle tweeted something out. Kyle uh, Ferguson tweeted out uh, a little snippet saying, like, if you want to use Magic Missile at the table, that's cool. But if you want to do an animation of it, that's something else. And it's like, so if I take a video of myself flinging a booger at someone and say abracadabra, is that a Magic Missile? (laughs) Like, what is a Magic Missile? A missile can be an arrow. It's a vague term. It can be a rocket shot from a plane. Uh... Like... It's stupid, right? Like, it, it, like the stuff they think they own a copyright to is dumb. And so I think the damage is done and everyone's like, if you're just going to be that way, well, we're going to, the people who are interested in creating things are going to take their business and do other cool things with it. The thing is, wizards will be fine. Even if they close up shop and just sit on whatever IPs they think they own. It's fine. They'll make new toys. It's a toy company. Like, it's Hasbro. Like, there's no losing scenario for them. It's just the community loses. Like, the fact that we have to have this kind of conversation about a hobby that was fine <laughs> um, is is how we all lose. And, yeah. uh, you know, that that that's why this uh, none of these, apolo- these apologies are all going to come with a caveat that, yeah, but we have plans and, and all that stuff. So until someone comes out I think says we're retracting the whole thing. We're going to rethink this. This was a complete mistake. And to be fair to wizards, this started with a leak. Mm-hmm. So they, they didn't break. It's like when you don't brace for impact and you fall, like it blindsided them. It's kind of reasonable that the reaction was the way that it was. If they weren't ready to come out as a unified front because of obvious internal arguments right Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. the fact that it was leaked was from someone disgruntled about what was going on probably internally so there's revolt in the ranks at the company yeah all that to say is i'm kind of unplugging from it it's now it's just people trying to keep their careers going on youtube at this point (laughs) for the most part like the damage is done and whether they pull it back or not i'm i'm definitely interested in trying other systems or experimenting or trying to talk people into it even if I don't publish, but I know a lot of people that this is probably not going to affect them that deeply and they'll still play D and I mean, D and D is the Kleenex of the space and people are still going to play. Well, to it. answer your question, what did they own? They didn't own a magic missile. What they owned was the goodwill and history of an amazing thing. And they, yeah, or and the opportunity to deepen that connection. Yes. And they, and that's what they lost. And, but, and this is a recurring theme losing. again with big companies who seem to be doing weird things. Square Enix, beloved developer, let's do NFT games and blockchain. Like everyone, every one of these big companies is getting their goodwill mined out by people uh, fracking for shareholder value. Yeah. And I that's think that's way the it. way of things. I like that. Th- throw the frackers under the, uh, under the bus as well. I like that. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Fracking hurts stuff. Yeah. You think it hurts frack- stuff, but yeah. who cares? I'm going to make. But I'm going to make budget this year and get a bonus. So. There you go. See? Just the four people that work under you you'll have to be fired. Sorry about that. They have to go. Because we need the real estate. We're going to sell their office. Oh, yeah. We're going to frack and lay people off. <laughs> yeah. Tell them that they've done a good thing for the company and thank them for their service. Like, That's right. It's a story that keeps repeating itself over and over again lately. You know, I don't like it. Uh, maybe that means change is coming. Who knows? All right. Let's move on to this. Um, oh, this is short and kind of a snarky thing at me, but I'll play it. Hey there, Core Hounds. This is the James the Trucker. I'm rolling uh, south on 49 from Kansas City, and I'm listening to Scott's new Game of the Year. You know, I don't think Scott's got the attention span for Game of the Year, so how about Game of the Month for Scott? Can you wait to the end of the month to declare Game of the Month? Love the show. Bye. Do you, though? Do you love it? Do you? Um, look. I I fully admit I have the attention span of a flea sometimes, and 
uh, th- I get excited about things in the moment, but I think we all kind of do. The beautiful enthusiasm of a ten-year-old. Yeah, it's precious. You're not. You're not cyn- like cynical. Suck. Every it's easy to be cynical. I, I can spit on my screen on YouTube and hit fifty cynical people thinking they're so unique in their cynical thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> it is a beautiful thing to watch you love something. Yeah, that sounded weird, but. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of what Scott does in his private what I time. Love to but do. you know what I mean? It's a beautiful thing. And people are just beaming on you because it's fun. And that's fine. That, well, know. and he, by the way, I saw, I, I kid a little bit because I know this dude. He's listened to shows that I've hosted for years and years and years. Always a cool guy. I know he's just funning with me. But, but it does, I mean, it's a decent point. I get excited about Dave the Diver in the way that I would, you know, in January or in December of next year when we're picking all of our favorite things, but will I remember it as much? I don't really know. Something else, I, some shiny thing I will get in my way. I think you're right, though. I, you often shine lights on indie projects, and that's, I think that like the positive gaming, like the subculture within the gaming space is going to just become indie auteurs. I love indies. Like, love them. You know, the, the, the regular Joe, everyone games. So the regular Joes will play Marvel Snap and FIFA. Yeah. And you know, understanding the real gems is a subculture now within the gaming space. You know, it's, yeah, it's where I think some of the most interesting rubber meets the most interesting road. It's just a fun place to be, and new things happen there. And sometimes it's from tiny little. I don't have to worry about their corporate structure. It's just a dude, his dog, and a a wife who works part time as a nurse because they got to make ends meet till the game sells well. Like I, I, yeah. I love that. And they have the tools now. They have the they have the talent and the tools coming together in a way, and the distribution in a way that we've never had before. It's an amazing time to be alive and make games. I think. I think so too. Despite all um, our issues. Um, I, yeah. Um. Anyway, thanks for. The I want to also just shout out by the because we never talk about it. we talk about all kinds of professions, but shout out to all the truck drivers. That looks like a boring as hell job. <laughs> And you make up a lot of our listenership, I think, sometimes. Yeah, so and they just, are keeping podcasting alive and well, so God bless them. Maybe Every time auto-driving some... trucks never mm. hit the road. Yep, there you go. Every time someone's like, who would watch a podcast that's audio only? I'm like, you've never worked a job that sucks. Mm. That yeah. You can listen to something too, have you? Cause... He might like it, though. I don't know. He sounds like he enjoys it. He's always calling I into threatened the to quit a job because they told me I couldn't have headphones in anymore at it. Really? Let me. Said, yeah. I said, Let... you take my headphones. I'm not working this shit job anymore. Yeah. Did they relent? My... No, they still enforced it. So I went and worked somewhere else. It's that <laughs> simple. Well, wait, That's where... that old school thing. Like back in the day before internet and headphones were very prevalent, it was just seen as like, oh, you're listening to metal. Like, be a worker. Be you know, like that yeah. an old school. Like, mm-hmm. be respectful. Like, even if you don't need to. Like demonstrate your fealty to the corporate enterprise by behaving in a way expected of you you're just like like, nowadays like shut up i'm listening to joe rogan (laughs) yeah pay me more (laughs) to be fair i will say this at that job there was an understanding that headphones were generally okay it is a case of someone being given an inch and trying to take a mile because someone went from oh headphones and listening to music is okay i will then set up my little phone and put on a television show and watch television at my desk. Oh, somebody blew it for everybody was a bridge else. too far, and then they decided to, to wreck it for everybody. Oh, uh, see. That person was not popular following that happening. I was just reading a thing and listening to a podcast about the 40-year 40, uh, yeah, 40 anniversary of the Tylenol killings here in the States where that dude killed seven people with uh, cyanide-laced Tylenol. Oh my god! And man, the stuff we did after that because of one a hole. And I'm not saying those deaths weren't worth doing something. I mean, this probably we needed to do this anyway. But everything changes. The way plastic is made, the way caps are made, the way uh, child proofing works. Um, what kind of laws are in place if you do tamper with with containers? Like it got crazy. Whereas before that, I was just like, I oh, just buy Tylenol and I here it is, and I open it and I give myself two of these. So people can F stuff up, man. And John, your TV guy, he may as well just be the Tylenol killer. That's what I'm saying. It's a maybe. basically the same thing. It's maybe a little harsh, did. yeah. Maybe a little maybe a yeah. little much. Uh, quick email from Chuck, who wrote into, uh, 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 what is it? Talk to the core at gmail.com is the email address. And he says, hey, guys, heard Scott's la- uh, take on Dave the Diver and also happened to be starting out uh, on Shipbreaker. I also recently just finished Subnautica, uh, Sub-Zero, 
and realized the common thread there was some low-pressure swimming and construction slash deconstruction mechanics. I recall I learned of the original Subnautica when it was on one of Scott's top games of the year on the Boop Show, and it was one of my all-time, or it is now one of my all-time favorites. Wondering if you played Sub-Zero or if it is on the playlist. Chuck, um, I have it bought and not played, but I really like the original. You played Subnautic, Subnautica? Oh, yeah, I played that first one. The reason you I didn't hear something crazy. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Like this is just a, this will be interesting to you considering what we have streamed together. Yeah. I can't play Subnautica. I think it's too scary. I know. We've talked about this. I think you don't like it because it's and you know what? You're not wrong. Especially the deeper you get into that game, deeper. <laughs> um, you literally go deeper, and it gets <laughs> it gets really scary. That game. Part of the reason I didn't get the Sub Zero thing are there are two things that scare me: deep, deep water and cold, cold, deep water. And so it's that's... worse when it's cold. If I'm going to go get eaten by a monster in deep water, I should at least be warm. But in creative mode. Now, if I play that game in creative mode where the stress is gone, I actually find it really relaxing. But when I play the real yeah. mode, it's it really it gets me. It's too much anxiety. I've, I've contemplated this game, but for the VR aspect of it. Oh, yes. Yeah, VR out of the gate, right? It just supports it. It's so VR supported. Yeah. So you should try it. Let's get is some. It, is it have spidery things? That's the only thing. Like, like <laughs> they make some water spider bullshit. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna uh, die. They got like uh, botanical stuff. Um, that's my that's only fear. Is some people, it's just like <laughs> it's a now, really cool game. And get... there's a certain <laughs> demographic that got really stoked when when we brought up tentacle anything. But sign me up. I didn't know this game had tentacles. Stuff. Tentacles. Hey. I don't some... mind tentacles, but like some of the monsters in VR would look gross. There's, a, I'm looking at screenshots. There's like an, a translucent octopus with four eyes. Ooh, that's scary. That's probably a rough experience in VR. I'm gonna guess it's scary down underwater in that game, and they do a really good job of building that tension. I think if you played it creative mode, like, and didn't have to worry so much about oxygen refills and all that, you'd probably do a little better. It'd probably be okay. Less scary because there's less at stake. Um, they're cool games though, so I'm glad you recommended them. And yeah, you're not wrong. All the stuff I really lean into, like these games he's listed, they all have those aspects. I hadn't really thought about it. You know, Shipbreaker, that zero gravity thing. Dave the Divers kind of got a feeling like that. Like it's the physics are all underwater. I don't know. Maybe that's the thing with me. How did you feel about Sonic the Hedgehog when he was underwater and it started doing the dent 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 dent? That made me want to throw my Genesis against the wall, the entire Genesis. Yeah, I hate it. I hate underwater 2D 2D games that are underwater. I usually hate. Dave the Diver is an exception, but like Mario water levels, f that shit. How do you feel about Echo the Dolphin? Oh, you know what? Echo the Dolphin is, but also terrifying. Yeah, I found it, Echo yeah. the Dolphin to be scary. There was that octopus that would slap you if you moved too fast near it. Yeah. And every time the dolphin got hit, he let out the most awful sound I've ever yeah, heard. Yeah, that oh. game, that I've game got, did yank on you that way. It's a weird one. I've I've got a water recommendation. You may have heard of it. It's an old one, classic indie game. Uh, Orc that massage. I love, oh. and I linked it. It's called Aquaria. Aquaria. I've been meaning to play it, and I keep not getting to it um trigger warning i think the the it was like a one or two developer team one of them you know uh, took their own life oh geez is no longer with us but left us with this beautiful game and um it's very musically based it's a metroidvania but it's 100 percent underwater and you have to play music to do um your abilities and change into fire outfits and it doesn't even I, it does actually play in widescreen but it was developed at a time when widescreen was not um it was what, 2007 right so seven, yeah. still, a lot of us are still on crts or just getting flat screens yeah, yeah but this is it's still it's um pretty timeless it still looks because it's all uh graphic-y it's still uh uh not graphic but it's like cartoony so yeah. it ages better than something trying to look realistic hand-drawn and all that sure i hadn't even uh, heard of this aquaria yeah mm-hmm. this uh it's it's re- it's really good. It's a full Metroidvania game, like a big big old map, all underwater, and like part of it is the currents run stronger, so you can't swim against it. So you got to get better flippers and stuff. It's yeah, it's only ten bucks. That's a, that's a bit of that's a recommend for me. I've been wanting to like stream it or play it again, revisit it. I love that game. It's the only game they let's see, yeah, the only game they made. 
Yep, it was like a two person. It was like one of the first, like back in the Braid Xbox uh, arcade era, like one of the first, you know, two man development team kind of deals. So. Oh, it's such an important time for indies. I love that whole era. Yeah. So a bit of history. If you haven't heard of it, this is up there with those indie games that are really um, seminal or noteworthy, I think. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, well, there you go. Thank you, uh, Chuck, for the email. Again, talk to the court gmail.com or those voicemails and texts come to us at 801-471-0462. Once again, we got a big list of people to list who joined our Patreon. You guys are freaking rad. This doesn't happen on any other shows. Of course, having a moment, and I love it. Um, I also really like making course, so it helps that this seems to match it. But we had a whole bunch of people join us this week. TV, Daniel, Evan, Michael Spencer. I don't know who TV is, but I like that name. I, I like to think television is now supporting us, finally. Yeah. Yep. Big um, TV coming pretty good. to watch our show. Grant Baldwin, London Roy. That's also cool. Or Landon Roy. Uh, Rod <laughs> Davenport, <laughs> Stephen Nuigan. Is Nuig- that one of the Baldwin brothers? <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully. I made up a name, and I think it's awesome. <laughs> Jason Clifford, Adam Lee, and uh, Eden Dorsey Mason all joined us since we last spoke, and they know the value of not ever having commercials, having pre-show content every week, and post-show in the case of the show, and other cool benefits you can only have by signing up at our Patreon, patreon.com slash core show. Be one of these cool people next week and join us today. A couple of quick notes. My buddy Brian Ibbett, co-host on the morning stream every day since 2011. We're like almost 3,000 episodes. Uh, Damn. He Jeez, started he started wow. making Steam Deck um uh holders or like stands. Oh. And he's 3D printing these and they're super cool. They're for the morning stream audience, but I thought it'd be worth mentioning here because some of you look like you might want to, you know, get a cool new Steam Deck. And if you if you're a listener of that show, you may not have heard of these, but it basically says the morning stream, but the R is in brackets, so if you take that out it says Steam, get it Steam. The morning steam. Anyway, it's got our cool like you. pixelated versions of ourselves in the background. He's making a bunch of these on his Etsy store, and I wanted to give him a shout out and uh, send yeah. some people his way. Uh, so go check that out at coverville3d.etsy.com. What an awesome idea, actually. A steam yeah. deck stand. Isn't that That's right? cool. It's really cool. He makes kyber crystal holders too. Much a bunch of. Yeah, cool. I was about to comment on that too. I'm like, it looks like. It's like makeup for nerds. Like you might have a display of lipstick, but it's like, yeah. oh, kyber crystals. Ooh, let me channel their energy. He I is like a 3D it. printing monster these days and uh, doing all kinds of cool stuff. So do check uh, it out. So also cool. in our chat room, Icy Fiva, a.k.a. Pascal, made something tonight <laughs> or showed something tonight that I want to show. This is so okay. cool. It's called Twitchifier. And any of you have tried to get notifications that we or any other of your favorite shows or streamers are going live, you'll know that the Twitch app and the mobile app are not always accurate sometimes i didn't even tell you that someone went live or you're supposed to get an email and it never shows up it's not the best system so he's like you know what f that i'm gonna make my own and he went and made this app uh, right now it's for windows and linux uh, it says there's there may be a mac version coming which i would love but it's a dex- desktop app he even has frog pants on the list which made me happy yeah i was like i see kit boga up there with frog pants i'm like yeah. damn it's really nice um i didn't expect that he says i'm his favorite but i don't know why anyway the must be the show but uh go check it out it will tell you as soon as your people are live and you don't have to have the twitch app or anything else installed just a cool thing so go to twitchafire.com and grab it i think it's very cool i don't know if he's still with us but i mean you know in the chat room he's still with us in, in, a, in a more cosmic way you know what i mean anyway that's uh twitchafire.com and uh, i love when you guys do cool stuff and that we get a chance to promote it here so if you ever have anything like that you want us to talk about let us know i think that's gonna do it uh frogpants.com slash core for everything else hey john time to put on the old lady underwear and tell us what we played today and if you're wondering because it's been four hours <laughs> <laughs> what what these boys got up to tonight let me tell you these are the games they talked about that you don't remember Scott played Chained Echoes. That was the JRPG game on Steam. (laughs) He played Pixel Cup Soccer, and he declared it his favorite sport game of 2023 so far this year. Another award from Scott Johnson. (laughs) And he played Cult of the Lamb, but not a lot, so don't worry about it. John played Stranger of paradise final fantasy origin a name so long it's probably why the show isn't over yet (laughs) he played old world it's where i live but it's also a game 
And he, he played Immortals Phoenix Rising on his computer, which was notable because it was on the computer, I mm-hmm. guess. Yeah. And Bo played Borderlands 3 because he knew the show would be going long and he didn't want to bog us down with a lot of other stuff. <laughs> all right. No, I, it's, it's literally all I played this week, Grandma. Oh, so, that's all right. And, the, and you played the, you played the, um, oh, no, you didn't do that. That was, I'm thinking of somebody else. Never mind. I won't even tell you what I thought it was because <laughs> I just realized how stupid I am. Anyway, there you go. That's the show. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed the show, maybe you want to come live next week or any other week. We start at 5 p.m. on uh, Friday, or, uh, Thursdays. Uh, that's Mountain Time. So it whatever. might be going to Fridays. Yeah. <laughs> if it keeps getting longer, yeah. we might wrap up yeah, on we're, Friday. We're, we're yeah. almost Friday right now. Yep. Sun's going to come up any minute. Uh, but Welcome anyway. to Core, the longest <laughs> night in gaming. That's right. Uh, it's always fun to have you guys here, though. So enjoy your week. We'll see you next time right here on Core. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Heracles, mightiest of mortals, slayer of beasts, defied Hera and accomplished the impossible wearing those bracers. And now, they belong to Phoenix. Through dumb luck. I love that guy. Oh, that's Adam Jensen.